Uh, we live. Uh, we live. Seems good. Alright, let's continue. Uh, I did do a couple of things off stream, like bring up more spiders. Uh, let's see. I accidentally requested long trains for the water here, but I threw together some automation for life support. Uh, we've got... Finished this build. Upgraded some more solar panels. Little things like this. Oh, and uh, I also... Uh, slightly improved our uh, blank data card build. Uh, so now there's another row of deconstruction, deconstruction, decontamination facilities to support a uh, seventh space manufactory down here. Uh, we needed more belt throughput for that, so I went. I got around to making a version of this that uh, fits together with underground belts that only go five tiles. Uh, I also noticed how easily we can, uh, with a bit more familiarity with the cycle, uh, with the production chain here, uh, Decontaminating cosmic water spits out almost all cosmic water. So it it's pretty trivial to fit the decontamination right here. And then we can just pump the cosmic water straight back into this area. That's less train logistics to deal with. Um, yikes. Why are we dropping 42% of our frames with a reduced... Reduced bitrate? Uh, I'm gonna have to adjust that one moment. I think I'll have to restart the stream for this. Uh, let's try it. Is that going to work? Maybe. Hey, Whiskers. Good to see you again. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right. The... Still dropping frames. Although it's going down overall. And he's back, indeed. Alright, so... Where are we now? Uh, I got like... 25 spiders here now. So it's definitely easier to build things like this. Although, I think I have them only carrying 100 scaffolding each, so... It still takes a few trips to fill out a block like this. I also threw together a blueprint that includes scaffolding for the entire block. Um, but yeah. So this, uh, this thing outputs contaminated bio sludge instead of outputting any contaminated cosmic water. Uh... And it's going to output a whole lot less of it as well. We do have to deal with two types of scrap uh, because of this, though. Um, and just to keep things simple, well, relatively, in a way, um, I did set this up to use long trains only. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the different size trains that are going to come here. Um, we've got a, just one stack inserter per resource per cargo wagon, so we don't have to worry about 
making sure all of the chests are... Well, all we have to do is make sure there's enough to fill uh, the train before it arrives. And we won't get any issues with inserters sticking out at the end. Um, can I get this out of my inventory? I think I... Oh. I, I don't think I need these just right now. Oops. What? Oh. There we go. Be gone. Um, and next is figuring, uh, figuring out what was next in terms of our production chain. Now that we've got some more prerequisites done, I believe we need boxes, which is to say material testing packs. That might actually be the last prerequisite. Oh, and photon stream. Photon stream should be very straightforward. Fluid plus physical equals fluid. Uh, so I think we'll just throw that together first. May as well do it over here, where the plasma has a short way to go, and then the output product has a short way to go. Uh, bring our spiders back to pick this stuff up. I also started chipping away at the northeast front with our military spiders here. We've got more rockets being delivered to this area for resupply. Uh, just because this place is getting attacked quite a lot with biters reacting to the pollution. So I figured I'd just change up where our front lines are for now. Do the safety dance. And over here. This is kind of making me want to revisit the AAI spider script idea, though that is... That would still be very challenging, I think. Not to mention if I added it to this playthrough, it would probably maybe be a disaster for the UPS. Alright, let's have them stroll through all of this stuff that's half destroyed already. And... Oh, did I remember to do the... Nope, of course not. Send out the old notification to the Discord. Do we have rockets being delivered here? Uh, let's see. We do... we do. 8,000. Let's have the spiders come back here for resupply since they're so close. Fantastic. All right, speaking of spiders, let's get our new construction army over here. And what else? Nothing in particular, I think. 
So what... Oh, I should have thought of this before, but what facility do we need? Particle accelerators. Um, those take up quite a lot of space. I think we'll just design this to fit as many as possible. First we need a drop-off station. And station goes here. And here. And here and here. I'll actually copy this part first. And drop off, drop off. it on this side because it doesn't take much space to get the maximum throughput. And we need a... Uh, actually, how fast are we going to need this to be? Alright, we do have some particle accelerators, that's good. So one of these only consume... that's the wrong recipe. Uh, one of these will consume 13 photon stream per second and almost no iron plate. Uh, it looks like we could do something like 400 of these before... Three fifty, three forty. I wasn't very close, but yeah, it would probably take more of these than we can fit in the entire block uh, to use up a, a single belt of iron plate. Uh, fluid throughput, on the other hand, I don't think that's going to be a problem either. We literally just fit as many of these as possible. And this block will suffice for this foreseeable future. Um, I kind of want to make it symmetrical, though. Well, let's figure out the layout of this part firstly. Uh, green is the output. This is one of those ones we'll be able to rotate thusly. Unfortunately, it's nine tiles long, so we can't use very nice piping. It's going to be an even number between here no matter what, right? If we had nine length pipes that had the side connections, that would be ideal. I guess we do three beams, just all the way down. Could be worse. And this goes here. That would indeed not reach if we use the smaller pipes. I don't suppose... No, it's not like we could save any space. Substation won't even reach across this thing. So there's kind of no point in using it. 
Um, I could maybe put... Well, that won't quite work. It might work on one side, but not the other. So I guess this will be a substation. Something like this. Uh, I'm sure a yellow inserter will be more than sufficient, actually. And then... We could use medium poles. No, yucky. Can't really fit the substation here, so... Let's do it like this. I guess that might be the way it has to be. That'll fit. All right. I think this is our blueprint. Except we're missing some underground pipes over here. We'll make it tile first and then we'll remove the extra bits at the end. Actually, that's a perfect fit, so why don't we do that? Oh. Blueprint, snap to grid relative, decrease the... What is this? Print. Snap to grid relative, decrease the width by one, and then we can paste that wherever we like. We're definitely not fitting another one of these. It would need three more tiles over there, there's one tile over there. We can probably put this pretty far up this way. Uh, we might be able to do it like that. If we just have the one train station for pickup. Okay, how fast would this be, though? Let's see. 64 machines. Would only give us 832 per second. That's less, th less than can fit through one pipe. So I think we actually will completely fill the, uh, completely fill the block like this. And we'll just have the one station for pickup. Alright. That was easy. Let's finish fleshing it out. Standard pickup. Threshold hundred thousand. 
Actually, maybe 25,000. I think we'll make it standard that small trains can pick up fluids. And let me just double check something real quick. Cool. Alright. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is Proton Stream Provider. Hey, my club. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, raiders. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's your stream today? Heading to sleep? Alright, take care. Thanks for the raid. Have a good one. You won't hear any... Uh, Any complaint or anything from me for Raid and Run, I do it all the time. It was good? Too long? No worries. Uh, I think I should move all of these up one tile. It'll make the piping a lot easier to connect. And I'm pretty sure... Uh, we won't have any trouble getting the belts in, since the throughput that we need for the belts is so low. Just to remind it ourselves, it's 8.3 per second for the entire block of iron plate. That could almost fit on half a belt of yellow. All right. Um, I'm almost tempted to move this over to the left by one tile, though. It would still be in one of the two middle tiles, so yes, let's do that. And then... That just happens to line up perfectly with this. Uh, here we've got 18, 19 tiles in the middle. What would be the pattern to connect these up most elegantly? Oh, you're kidding. That's too perfect. Very neat indeed. Could maybe think about not having the corners stick out like that. But otherwise, that's all good. Um, we're definitely not going to need... We don't even need to have another station over here or anything. Literally the slowest balanced unloader that we have will be sufficient for this. Wait, what? There we go. Alright. So... I don't even have to make sure they use both sides of the belt. Where's my splitters? Here. Here. And that would go there. And then all that's left is Connecting the input pipes somehow. Um, we obviously need 
points per block like this. To connect these two. We can fit that up through there, but then nothing over here. Hmm. If I move this splitter up this way, and then move this thing. Just do it like this, I guess. I don't love the look of this bit of belt, but I think I'm going to love the look of the pipes if I do it another way less. Wait, what? Oh. Oh, it's these... Oh, we've got a whole other row of tiles down here that we can use. Well, that makes it a bit easier. Okay, in that case... We can move all of this down again. Luckily, I accidentally placed that bit of pipe there. Alright, so this goes here, actually. And don't worry, that won't connect because this is a 15 tile long pipe. here as well. That looks much better. And we do already have this input connected. Okay. Actually, I think it's a little better if we remove these ones also. Just to make it very clear that those pipes are not connected. Have we run out of pipe? I think we might have. No, it doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, we have a little bit. Alright, let's send our spiders back for resupply. Uh, maybe I forgot to turn this back on earlier. To make sure we do produce the space pipes. But yeah, this build is by far the simplest one I've done in a while. Uh, for the stuff that has to be done in space, that is. Now, let's make sure we remember to tell LTN what's already at this station. We won't need this one. Uh, this will be iron plate and... I think it's iron stream? Provider? Uh, requester, rather. It's not ion stream, it's plasma stream. Plasma stream. Uh, 
Quest threshold, 100k. That's for the benefit of the fluid. Iron plate. Two train loads. Iron stream. Wait, no, it's plasma stream. Uh, just a little bit more than one train load. So that we don't overfill this. What happened here? Whatever it is, it seems to be fixed now. And that should basically be it. Um, I think we can turn this on already. Let's add some substations as well. And we need the substations for all of these to actually connect somewhere also. That'll take care of that room. Oh, uh, before the train gets here, let's... Add some undergrounds. That's perfect. Close enough. Wait, why was that one exactly the right length? Oh, because it goes into a splitter. Okay. Output pipe is already done, actually. We can remove these undergrounds. Fantastic. I think that's actually it, except for these substations. Once we've actually physically built the rest of this, uh, that build should should be complete. All right, let's get some of our spiders to come back. I don't think they're going to have all of the space pipe that I'm looking for just yet. Oh, I seem to have 50 of these on my person already. That might help a little bit. Make it 87. Probably the spiders also were already carrying enough to finish this build, hopefully. But a bunch of stuff got put in their trash slots. Maybe not. What are we missing? A few three length pipes and quite a lot of particle accelerators, actually. And now we're just missing the plasma stream, which we do have. Let's just double check this is set up correctly. Provide threshold 100k. Lung trains. We are telling LTN what we've got. So, up oh, there it is. Fantastic. Hey, Veldek. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So that should be all it takes to get this block at least partly functional. Depending on which pieces of pipe are missing. All those beautiful synchronized inserters. Where's our train? Oh. 
that would probably help. Didn't make the same mistake for Ion Stream. And down we come. I guess I could have made it a separate station for the fluid, but the throughput of the iron plate is so incredibly slow, I'm really not worried about it. Okay, and last but not least, or well, I think it's last anyway, uh, we need to connect this to here somewhere. I'm not seeing anywhere super convenient to do that, but... If we don't mind draining from not the middle of this thing, uh, this should be fine. Considering the overall throughput for the entire block is like three quarters of one pipe, I think that'll probably be fine. How long does it take? There we go. And there's our proton stream. Fantastic. Obviously going a bit slower than it normally would because we're missing most of these machines. What's our actual rate of production? Uh, proton stream. Stream. Proton. Oh, it's it's under fluids. Even though, when you look under fluids for, like under the signal list, for example, it's not there. Okay. Fluids, proton stream, we're at about 6,000 per second, all right, uh, per minute, right? Uh, 600 per minute. Fair enough. It's like one per second, that's not... Yeah, that's a bit more what I was expecting to see after looking at this flow. Okay. Let's make sure all of these power poles are connected. I think here is probably as clean a spot to do it as anywhere. It's pretty consistent with the rest of the build as well. Now that we've knocked off the easy prerequisite, and the only thing left to do here is wait for our crafting system to build the rest of this. Um, the next thing we want to do is possibly the last prerequisite to get this block going. Uh, material testing packs. Also, I may have forgotten. No, here it is. We did indeed request Proton Stream. Okay. So where do we want to build material testing packs? Um, I have a feeling it's going to be central to more than a couple of things. Does it even really matter? Whoops, whoops, whoops. It's only 312 per second. I need to copy this block, but for Ion Stream, and then turn this block into nothing but uh, Plasma Stream. It'll scale a lot better. Proton Stream. There was something or other I was specific I was planning to build down here, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Messed up the spiders. I 
I guess if we... If we put the boxes down here, there'll be a very short train trip to deliver them over here. So let's do that. stops. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Alright, what do we need for material testing packs? Does it come under science? No, there it is. Iron, copper, plastic, and stone. And it takes five seconds. It's just straight up one to one to one to one, two belts. Or depending on the throughput, maybe significantly more than two belts. Let's see how many we can fit. Material testing pack. Um, so one of these is 6.8 per second for every resource. Or to put it another way, half a... A bit more than half a stack inserter. So we should have one stack inserter for each resource. And if we put these in a row... Maybe fit about that many. That's going to be more than a belt, right? That is 54 per second for each resource. I'm not sure how I'm going to fit uh, four belts, like one full belt of each input. We did that with three over here, which wasn't too difficult. Let's see what we can do. And obviously we'll trim this a little bit until it's just over 45. Sushi belt? <laughs> I don't know if this is the optimal place for a sushi belt, actually. I am Sark. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how many of these does it take before we fill up a half belt for each resource? It looks like four is too many. Yeah. Uh, and we're aiming for... Well, maybe we should go for six so that the input stays saturated. That'll make things easier in a number of ways. I kind of want the output facing like that. Okay. So if we're going to do six of these, let's just call it one belt for each resource. Um, for starters, we can do one input like that. Let's say this one's iron plate. And then copper plate. Plastic and stone. Now, if 
if this repeats like so, that's almost perfect. Good enough. And then this one's going to be a, almost a problem. That might, this might be easier than I thought it would be. This one could just be straight like that. Does that reach? It does. Yeah, I think that's it. It looks a bit weird, but um, it does give us uh, a full belt for each resource coming in. Also, each of these could just be regular stack inserters, but this helps illustrate what's what for now. Um, and then output. Wait, what? That's not right. Okay. Now the question for the ages, where do the substations fit into this? If only that underground belt could reach one tile further is something I've found myself saying a couple of times. This may actually be a job for medium poles. You're kidding. That one's not quite powered. I wanted to have these all one tile apart, but I think this is a smaller aesthetic sacrifice. Maybe we could put this one down here instead. How's that going to look? Everything is powered. Just barely. Oh, wait. If we did that, there would now be room for substations. I think we'll do that. Start with this one. That's not right. Well, one of these is going to be a bit off regardless. Same thing on the opposite side. Can't even quite have a substation covering those two either. Okay. 
Actually, what should the undergrounds look like over here? It's one tile short. Actually, that's kind of a nice symmetry in and of itself, I guess. And then the choice for where to put the substations becomes fairly obvious. Cool. And last but not least... Get rid of all the extra stuff at the end that doesn't make sense anymore. Wait, what? Oh. And I don't suppose... That's gonna look weird no matter how I do it. Just leave that as it is. Now then... Blueprint. Snap to grid relative. Uh, I might just delete that for now. And see how many of these we can fit. It's very clearly three. So we're looking at like... Well, how many is this? 36. I'm pretty sure it's just over 120 per second. Oh. Wait, what? Hold on. This is six machines. Oh, right. Uh, it's 40 per second from six, not from 12. Do we have room? We do. Uh, I think it'd be easier if I just delete this, edit this one, and then move the substations around, add some splitters so they use both sides of the belt. Overkill? Definitely. This will be the last one of these blocks we have to make for a very long time. Do you need these packs for anything else? Uh, they are very... they're a core component of material science as well. And I don't know what else just yet. Okay. Let's delete this stuff for the moment. Actually, let's delete all of it. Get rid of the clutter. That's the wrong one. Wait, how fast is this? 6.8 per second per machine. So we need a stack inserter. Um, well, I'm pretty sure we need a stack inserter to output these. Yeah, we definitely need a stack inserter. Okay. Uh, what we were looking at is... Something like this. Except... Should I put the splitters here? Is that going to be good enough? I think it probably will be. Yeah, that should be fine. 
and then Substation goes here, and here, and now it's nice and symmetrical. Fantastic. Let's update. Let's just get rid of this for now. Nav set mode, so our blueprints are temporary. Snap to grid relative. Uh, that's actually it. And then. That is one tile off being exactly in the middle. just have to supply uh come to think of it I might have overdone it 36 machines that's not looking right oh there we go uh 244.8 per second of each resource we can't support that with our Input stations. We can do 180 per second from each of them. So, how many machines would it take? If we go for 30, 204. We can. I don't want to have, like, an odd number of these sticking out. So if we go for 24, that's 163 per second. We can support that fairly easily. That's one hungry block. Yeah. And it's only, like, it's only going to be 24 machines, so why not? You know? And then we don't have, we're, we're probably never going to have to make another block like this. Maybe. Uh, let's see. If I use this, uh, this blueprint right here, it should be sufficient to support this and we're not going to run out of space. And we just need one combinator per set. I think that's the way to go. I need to make a space version of this first. So let's get started. Basically, what we're doing here is what we usually do with a balanced unloader. Why is this all... Oh. I'm just going to do this from scratch so we can demonstrate how it works a bit better. So normally what we do is have a bunch of chests. Connect them all with wire. Feed it to an arithmetic combinator, which is going to get the average. Or these days I like to use the negative average. By dividing by the number of chests. And then send that to our inserters each of which are connected directly to just the one chest. And the inserter decides when it should unload based on uh, the average 
doing it this way, it implicitly does addition and subtraction, or you could do like divided by 24, output A for average, uh, is the contents of the chest less than or equal to average, or less than or equal to zero if we're doing it with the negative average, implicit addition and subtraction. Uh, what we're going to do instead of this is the inserters themselves are not going to decide anything. And it's going to be this bit of belt right here that's going to switch on and off. So the individual chests are going to get unloaded unevenly, but the sets of chests that uh, line up with each cargo wagon are going to get unloaded equally. So we're going to use red wire to connect this set of chests to our our belt down here. And we're going to connect the belt itself to the output uh, from here. And we're going to divide it by four cargo wagons instead of 24 chests. So each divided by negative four. Uh, we're not going to read belt contents. We're going to enable disable. Has to be less than or equal to zero, which zero would indicate average. Since we're getting a positive number from the red wire, a negative average from the arithmetic combinator. And then just copy all that across. And that should be it. Uh, and according to my notes here, this design will give us sometimes a full 180 per second output. Uh, it depends on if things get imbalanced for a moment. Uh, that will slow the others down a bit. The final version of this basically just adds latch behavior to uh, each of the each of the bits of belt here, uh, so it'll make decisions based on a less strict count of the local amount of uh, items versus the average. Do you not use the bigger AAI containers due to preference? Um, I would definitely use the big AAI containers, it's just that I got really deep into this playthrough without using them. Uh, especially considering before I got a little upgrade recently, uh, the UPS was really getting bad. Uh, more chests, more inserters, more everything. Uh, these things do add up. Uh, with with space exploration in particular, I would definitely recommend using the bigger containers. Shot Shadow Plus. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we have six inputs for each of these to split through. That's not my favorite number. I wonder if... One, two... Three, one, two, three, four. We're aiming for like 24, or less than 30 anyway. Twenty-six would probably be about perfect. But I wonder if we could should fit a couple of more of these down here. And we could do two columns like this. Let's see, we've got eight times four. That would be the number we're looking for, right? Thirty-two. Wait, what? Oh. Or we could do seven times four. Twenty-eight, which is going to... 
It's going to be more than the belts can support, isn't it? Which one of these machines are real? There's one. The 28 is going to go over our target. I could always make it a little bit asymmetrical. Or well, not asymmetrical so much as just take one off of each side. Maybe. That would just make it so much easier to deal with the belts. Let's consider it. So this... Uh, can't quite tell where it goes now. Let's copy this down to here. And this goes here. I think our spiders all have... No? Some of them at least have space manufactories in their logistic trash slots right now. Alright, so 32, that's too many. Which is sort of good. Oh, I should have got rid of this entire row. Okay. Seven times four. Twenty-eight. Take some off the sides. That's actually a pretty good fit. Put this in the middle. And then... Um, let's make this one iron. Well, first of all, let's... We are going to be able to fit this here, but... We'll have to get a little creative with the outputs. I also don't particularly like the combinators being where they are for some of these, so let's fix that as well. Goes there, that goes there. And apparently this is out of range of our spiders. Actually, they should have combinators. Or oh, I think just one of them is carrying combinators, actually. I need to redo their requests. And probably have a couple of them just carry scaffolding. Actually, no, that would just overwhelm their bots. Okay, I like that a bit better. So this one is going to be iron, copper, what was it, plastic and stone? Plastic. And stone. just double check that is the recipe. Fantastic. Iron plate. A plate. Oh. 
So that being the case, uh, iron plate goes here. These are going to all crisscross each other, and I don't really know where to start. But I guess the thing to do is to just make a start and see what happens. Hey, Vin Shady. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's not quite right. This goes here. Let's send our spiders back to sort themselves out. And their unhappy little hovering bots as well. Can you show your attack spider-trons? Mine seem to get stuck on movement. Even with a few biters, uh, sure. So, what I've got is uh, two portable RTGs, five adaptive armor Mark IV, one personal laser just in case, and a couple of batteries, and they carry rockets. Speaking of. Let's get them back to work. Don't think there's actually any biters there. Oh, and I have one Spidertron following them that, instead of a laser, has a RoboPort some construction bots and repair packs. Just in case. But we try to avoid them taking any actual damage to begin with, which also minimizes how much the bots are, uh, the construction bots are going to be at risk to repair them. And the zigzagging is to make the spit, which has to lead the target, miss as often as possible. Since I can't program them to react to it. Alright, back to base after that, I think. How many are there? Uh, about 20, I think. I've actually, the different, some of the different colors are actually because I've got two squads here, but I got lazy and had the second squad just follow the first. Looks kind of like Pikachu, I suppose. No legs. No legs and not stuck. Yeah, the way they move is uh, particularly important. I mean, because of the group, some of them will still get hit by the spit, but the one in the lead in particular really needs to not get slowed down by spit too often. The map drawing? Oh, right. Uh, does it, though? It maybe looks like Cursed Pikachu. Very Cursed Pikachu. Game is lagging, or you slow the speed? Uh, if you mean the UPS, uh, yes, uh, there's a lot going on in this save, so especially if I zoom out to here, for some reason when your UPS is getting low, just by turning on and off electrical networks, if you're looking at a whole lot of stuff, you can see a difference in the UPS, but if we zoom in so we're not looking at anything, we do get back into the 40s. 
Um, but yeah, it is because there is a lot going on in this save. Uh, Doris, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Lopto as well. Pikachu ran over by a tank. Yes. Okay. Uh, and this one is also iron. Uh, if this is going to be plastic, that'll go here. And here. One, two, three. That belt actually ended up closer to where it needs to be than I thought. Okay. Um, that goes there. This will go here, and this one all the way over this way somewhere. That's iron and plastic. Copper goes here. I think we'll just have this go straight through like so. And this one. These two need to go to the middle. This one needs to go way over here. But we're also going to run into... Okay. We don't have room for another belt going up that way, so... We'll do the same thing with this. I think. Which one's copper? Oh, that's copper, so plastic should have gone there, actually. Yeah, that's plastic. Okay, we've already got copper connected there. Uh, this one will be in underground. That goes there. This is going to get crowded real quick. But we've gotten through worse spaghetti than I think this is going to turn out to be. It's actually fairly convenient. Isn't the iron lane on the right wrong? I believe you are correct. Thank you. Uh, Pappy Redstone. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I don't want these to line up. Alright, so copper just needs to go here. Oh, I did the same mistake. Okay, so that's copper. Probably do it 
through here. And then down this way. That's not quite good enough. How about this? Just tentatively. there, copper goes here, doing fine thanks you, yeah not too bad, not too bad at all, um, let's get our spiders back down here to build some of this stuff, although, uh, it's fine, I was going to say I don't want them actually building the belts until we're done designing them, but it's really not that big of a deal to shift them around. Uh, what is this? Plastic goes there. I made the same mistake three times. It's going to make that part a bit easier to deal with, maybe. Okay. So what is this supposed to be? Stone. So have I actually finished three of these? Iron goes here. Iron goes here. Iron goes here. And iron goes here. Copper. That one's very straightforward. This one goes there. This goes here, and this goes here. Plastic, number one. Uh, that would be stone, wouldn't it? Hmm, I don't like the way those line up. Actually, maybe I'll do this. And then this can... No, that still doesn't line up. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so plastic number one goes here. Plastic number two. Plastic number three. And plastic number four. Fantastic. Uh, what's next? Stone. Of course, but where is it going to go? Seems fairly obvious the easiest way to deal with the stone. Uh, is have it go down this way. Number two is going to have to slide through here or here. Otherwise, we won't have room for the other outputs. Stone number two goes here. I think we'll just do the same thing. This will be better. 
actually, if we're going to do that, this would be a nicer fit. And stone number three needs to get here somehow. That's pretty easy, actually. And stone number four needs to go all the way over here somehow. But I don't think it's going to be particularly difficult. Fantastic. Did we... Nope, there it is. I knew there was some corner I didn't finish. Okay. Well, that's a delightful mess. Um, also, we don't actually have any mergers and balances for all of these. So if one resource were to somehow get totally out of balance, uh, it would mess up everything. But we've got equal ratios going in of all resources going into all machines. Uh, one to one to one to one. And they all go to the same... Uh, the same number of machines, etc. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, we could definitely add some more ground belts to tidy this up a little bit. That one's a bit unnecessary. Last one feels too short. Wait, what? Undo levels are a bit strange sometimes. Okay. Let's bring our spiders back with more space assembly machines. If we even have them, though. Did I not set the requests? Let's see. Space assembly machine. There it is. It's requesting two, we just don't have them. Are we not making them here? I don't think we're making them here yet. We had a bunch of them saved up from before. Space Manufactory, that's what I was trying to say. Well, before we can make those, we need to make a bunch of other prerequisites. Uh, I believe we have a bunch of them way up here. So why don't we send our spiders on a little trip. Looks like they're not going to have any trouble following that. And all the way back up here. Fantastic. Look at those legs go. Also, let's check on our military spiders again. They are chilling out. Fantastic. There's a few more expansions up here. It's all in the range of artillery, though. I think I'd like to grab this particular choke point also.
Okay. Um, I don't think there's enough water there that... No, there's definitely not enough water there that they might get stuck or confused or something. Alright. Check on them in a minute. Uh, meanwhile, I should probably set up the train stops. First of all... Uh, since we're going to connect these, we need to be specific about which resources we're getting the averages of here. Instead of using a wild card like each. Uh, and this one should be iron plate less than or equal to zero. Actually, I don't think... Looking at the wire connections... We should be able to leave those the same. So this will be stone, and this will be plastic. And then uh, connect like so, so LTN knows what's in these chests. And then we just request iron plate, two train loads, copper plate, two train loads, uh, plastic, and stone, I'm going to still request 32k, even though it's tri twice as many train trips, uh, the actual resource input. Still needs to be one to one to one to one. I just realized something that has a. that potentially may be upsetting. We can make material testing packs on the ground, which means we could use productivity bonuses. Which means I shouldn't have built this block. Uh, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna set this block up for now, and I'll set it as a low priority for pickup, and we might use, uh, a million assembly machines on the ground to make material testing packs and rocket them up. Colonel Will found it. Imperative to remove biters on islands, seeing that they spawn thousands of biters trying to path when there's no path to the base. Interesting. I would have thought uh, there'd be some kind of optimi optimization to make them not bother. In any case, we will be clearing out Nalvis completely sooner or later. Even if I don't actively do it... Um, I'm actually a little surprised at the progress that I've been seeing. All of these little holes in the biter nests that you can see everywhere are from the uh, the weapon delivery cannons we have. We've got them automatically targeting Nalvis. Um, they'll even attack biters in, as opposed to just nests and worms. Did, did that just fire around at nothing? Probably there was some overlap in where the cannons were aimed. Uh, but yeah, we're paying a lot of resources over a long time to gradually, automatically clear out the biters on Nalvis. 
Material testing pack stacks up, stacks to 10. Whereas the other ones stack to 100 or 50 each. Stacking to 10 is pretty harsh, I have to say. I'm definitely feeling less bad about at least temporarily making these in space. Um, but I may make a block on the ground just to get that productivity bonus later. In any case, we will finish this one and use it. Um, I do need to put some substations in place. For some reason, I've actually managed to run out of substations personally. Let's go pick some up. Okay. Uh, spiders are doing just fine. Yeah, we actually have a pretty big island right here as well. Oh, wow. That's a lot of cranky behemoths. It's just a carpet of them. Uh, do we have substations now? Apparently not. Are we not making them here? We are. We're just trying to make way too many pipes and things. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Ian? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What are we missing here? Uh, nothing, actually. It's just going slow because I set the... recipe combinators not to multiply by input count when we're setting the requests here. Because for some things it massively over-requests. I should just add... I hate to have to add two more combinators to every single um, machine, well, in, even though in this case it's only two, but what I could do is uh, each greater than zero output each one, or everything, and then multiply that by, well, here's the thing. That would just set every request to, like, 50 or whatever. I could normalize and multiply it quite easily, but what I really want is to set a cap. Which would take a few more combinators. Low energy in space, I guess? Low energy in space. Oh, this is true. Alright, time to grab some more flat solar panels. Are we having those delivered here automatically? Yes, we are. Uh, rather than wait for the spiders, I'll grab some of those myself. And... I think we'll continue to expand this area. How much do we need? More than a gigawatt. But it didn't take many of these flat solar panels. I might just go around upgrading the existing flat solar panels, actually, so I don't have to think about where to put them. Uh, let's do an upgrade planning. Flat solar panel becomes tier 2. And I could probably get a lot of this done. Whoops. RIP Temporary Upgrade Planner. Flat Solar Panel, Tier 2. Where are we? I think that's all of them up there. Don't think we have any more regular flat solar panels down here. That's getting into the UPS. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is drop some of these off upstairs. And... It 
Should be some... Okay, it's going to be a lot faster if I just drop it in a purple chest. Since we haven't got many logistic bots up here. Or I could stuff it in here as well. Oh, apparently they did have some flat solars already. And we're already positive. That was easier than I thought it would be. Uh, how many regular flat solar panels remain? 86. Well, that should do it. Indeed. Okay. Um... Spiders, do you have some assemblers now? Good. Fantastic. Let's head back down. Ah, the pitter patter of giant robot spider legs. And we do have trains that have arrived before I got power in place. Uh, while we're waiting, we can start designing this part. Green stop goes here, I think. And... I don't know that I've really left enough space. We can probably move this up like one or two tiles. Probably. Maybe. Hopefully. If we're lucky. Um, but yeah, we need a row of chests. We could do a row of chests on the other side, but... Um, doesn't necessarily make it easy to get the full throughput there. We could do two uh, pickup stations. So we just have two belts of input for each station. That might be a lot easier, actually. Although, given the way we're doing balanced unloads of this, but we're not merging and splitting it, uh, one train picking up while the other doesn't could be a problem. Whereas if it all merges together, not so much. We could do chests on both sides and have two belts coming in like this and two belts like this. That would actually be pretty easy. So let's maybe give that a try. One of our spiders got stuck. I'll use the nav set to make a temporary remote. And then get you to follow again. I'm surprised out of all of the spiders we have, literally one of them got stuck there. Okay. Uh, also gonna have to deal with this crisscross of wires because that's not okay. Look at this. Navset, cable. Much better. I hereby name the spider Stretch, indeed. Hey, damsel. Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. 
How's your stream today? How you doing? Welcome Cables? Happy Redstone? Uh, can you name Spidertrons? No, I don't think so. Although I... No, wait, yes you can, actually. Yeah, I usually call the, uh... Uh, I usually call the Construction Spiders Constructortron. Um... But yeah, stream was great. Got Naquitite. I haven't heard of that before. Not that you could tell from my pronunciation. Uh, also welcome this vegan, uh, Chris Brito, Victor Magnus, Ragnarok. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we're going to bring our belts down uh, here, I think. There's just enough room. Okay. And then... Uh, we need two belts coming from the other side. It's the thing you need for final sciences. Yeah. Perfectly planned? Uh, yes. Calculated. 100%. Especially the fact that I didn't have room for, like, a four-belt input to these... To this station right here on this side. I'm surprised I kind of thought you were ahead of me. Uh, no I don't think so. I mean definitely not. We had some delays and setbacks for a while. We don't need stack filter inserters for this part. Uh, there's only going to be one resource being picked up here so we don't have to worry about Inserters sticking out after they've done their job. Uh, if it's two belts on each side, then fast inserters will be enough here. Loaders, 24 fast. And go. Delays in Factorio. <laughs> yeah, whoever heard of getting bogged down by spiders or resources running out or anything like that in Factorio. Especially uh, space exploration, I think the start by default is a bit slow. Alright, so this is going to be material testing pack pickup. Uh... Can we check the stack size by doing this? Yeah, it is. It really is just 10. Okay. Uh, so... That would mean... Well, we don't actually have to know the stack size at this point. This is the pickup station. Let's add some substations up here. And there's not going to be a particularly neat place to put this, is there? And this one, this one's looking a lot neater. I guess we'll just have to deal with that one wonky substation. So where are you at in your run? Uh, well, we're working towards Energy Science Pack 2 being in the rail block. 
I haven't actually done Energy Science Pack 2 before. This is my replication of the first lot of the main prerequisites for Energy Science Packs. I was going to do something similar with the uh, quantum and subatomic and atomic data, and then whatever the fourth one was. Force field data, as it turns out, uh, kind of makes this whole thing not work the way I wanted it to. Because we now need electromagnetic data and uh, polarization data. Uh, electromagnetic field data and polarization data to be produced at the same rate that we were already doing it here uh, just to support force field data which we need at the same pace to get our broad energy catalogs and I, I guess it's not strictly necessary but we decided to do broad energy insight Um, but I think we did need broad energy catalog. Yeah, there it is. We need that for energy science pack two, regardless. The game will keep doing that to you. Yeah, I mean, I fully expect a, a much smaller example. Uh, iterating on this block that makes uh, blank data cards. Um, if I'd realized from the beginning how we're using cosmic water, it's going to spit out uh, contaminated cosmic water, and literally 99% of the cosmic water comes back with a decontamination facility. I definitely would have put these decontamination facilities here to begin with, as opposed to exporting contaminated cosmic water, bringing it over here, and then bringing the cosmic water back. Uh, instead, we've got an incredibly slow trickle of contaminated biosludge, which is much more preferable when we're dealing with a side product that we need to get rid of to keep getting our blank data cards. Okay, let's... Uh... Let's finish connecting these up, shall we? We still need eight, nine uh, space manufactories. Are we anywhere near close to making some? Let's stop making pipes for a second. Uh, we're still making pipes because they were all going into the the longer pipes. Okay, that's that's a lot of stuff we need to make at the moment actually. When did we When did we place more hypercoolers? Oh, we didn't place more. It's because we got all these spiders. Yeah, they're all carrying some, so all of a sudden we've got a massive run on stuff that we need to produce. Okay. I guess that's fine. Um, for now, let's just get our block functional, I suppose. That'll do. And... Uh, don't tell me they're out of belts. They should have picked up belts when they went up north, actually. That's some fast manufactory animation? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I've seen it literally do like... Yeah, there it is. Literally a frame or two of animation to build something. It's a little bit speedy. Suffice to say, with almost every recipe... Uh, by, oh my goodness. Um, by far the bottleneck here is... I forgot... I forgot to blacklist on these requester chests down here that get set dynamically. 
all of the things that we're putting in these requester chests up here just all the time. Uh, whoops. Let's pick up those items that are on the ground for some reason as well. Um, okay. So we're going to need a constant combinator. A wire. This, these are already using red, so we'll use green. And we're just going to say negative one million uh, for each for each thing that we've already got in the other requester chests. And. Implicitly, when you use set requests or set filters on an inserter, uh, zero or a negative number is not included. So that's all we have to do to have a blacklist uh, of these items. Iron stick. Uh, concrete and stone brick. Where did concrete go? Circuits and batteries. What else? Cable, plastic, gear, and flying robot frames. I'm not too worried about the flying robot frames. Actually, theoretically, when there's a big run on them, that could fill up those requested chests. Cable, plastic... Uh, what am I doing? Gear... Flying robot frame... And low density structure. Cool. So we've already got a system in place to remove excess items from these requester chests. Uh, but more importantly, in future, they won't massively overfill with items that we've already got up here. The recent update to SE seems to have slowed the animation rate. Fair enough. Oh, we should definitely add heat shielding this. And while we're at it, no heat shielding in these requested chests. Alright, cool. Uh, let's just save real quick. I don't want to have to do that again. I'm conducting an experiment. Can you check your all-time basic ore usage? Uh, like iron ore? Wait, how am I... Hundred and fifty one million iron ore, is this what you're looking for? Like iron or copper, just overall number. Hundred and fifty one iron, hundred and ten copper, uh just under a hundred stone. Coal is at eighty three. I feel better. <laughs> I'm sitting at around a hundred and ten mil. Fair enough. Although, I do have a throughput of certain resources. Um, because I'm not using K2, I don't actually have a way to convert uh, overflow resources to something else. So, in order to keep core mining going, uh, so that we don't, you know run out of copper, but then copper isn't getting made here because we've got too much iron. Uh, we're actually destroying resources. Uh, but we do have a... We do have a system of priorities and 
uh, like logistic train stop, uh, encoded network IDs, um, so that we never actually take iron, for example, from a mine straight to here. It's only, uh, it's only ore that comes from core mining, and only if everything else is full, and that includes, uh, for example, having uh, 576,000 iron ore. What else? We've got 1.1 million iron plate here. It should be the same number of steel, about a million. So we're not we're not destroying these items frivolously. It's uh, basically a last resort. I'm not using K2 either. Definitely makes it harder for that. Yeah. It's either this or literally just keep building storages indefinitely. Because the arbitrary ratio of resources that you get from core, uh, core fragment processing is just never going to match your actual usage. Uh, so, that's looking a bit backward. Auto save. And why do we not have any of this here yet? We've got no stone, that's why. That, that's a bit surprising, actually. Why do we have no stone? Uh, stone? That's a bit odd. Um, we actually don't have any stone being sent up from Nalvis right now. Uh-oh. Okay, there's a decent amount here, and more being delivered. I guess I could bump up the priority on sending stone up to orbit. We do have a train coming to deliver stone right now. Priority... Um, but also, we kind of, sort of, put all of our stone, uh, we kind of sent it back to Nalvis because we were getting lots and lots of stone from scrap processing that we had to get rid of. But yeah, that is one of the last things I expected to see right now suddenly we have stone problems again. It might be a graphic jam problem. Oh, wow, this is worse than I thought. Uh, okay. I think we figured out the problem with stone throughput. Um, how did... Uh-oh. Uh, uh-oh. There's no power here. Is this it? Is this everything? I'm guessing the I'm, I'm guessing the train limit up here is like four or something because it's so remote. It's five. So we've got one. Uh, not two. Yeah, we don't have like a stacker up here. Although there are other places this train could be waiting that's out of the way. Alright, I'm going to have to figure out why... What? What happened here? What? What on earth? Was it a media? Uh... 
the medias we've been getting reports for uh, for oh Hagen's getting a parental mass ejection tomorrow wait do we even have an umbrella there we don't that is suboptimal. I may end up having to pay Hagen a visit. But yeah, this is where we're getting our uh, cryonite. As you can see, this is like the most basic uh, outpost that we managed to come up with. Anyway, I need to get that power reconnected. Where are our construction spiders on Narvis? Um, well, as soon as I send them there, that'll get redone, but how did this happen in the first place? Do we have... Media defense installation ammo, yes. Was it just a really improbable media? Disabled by script, I think that's normal, right? Uh, I don't think we've had any power problems here for quite a while. No, that all looks normal. Yeah, I think it... I think this might have just been... A really unlikely media strike. If it was biters, then a lot more would be destroyed. Unless somehow one little biter got here and it got hit by the uh, by the weapon delivery cannon. They auto enable when it when shit happens. Fair enough. Silent storm. Welcome, welcome. And, uh, Hughes Mike, I don't know if I said earlier today. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Well. That's, uh... That's a slightly concerning mystery. I'm gonna say... Media Strike. As the number one candidate. Number two candidate, somehow a biter slipped through the cracks. We did, it's been a long time, but we had something broken up here before. No, I think I would have noticed this a lot sooner if that's what happened. I think it probably had to be a media. Even though we've got like, I think 12? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10... I think we've got 10 media defense installations. Uh, well, that would make sense, I suppose. That would be ever so slightly risky, I think. Why don't we add a couple more? Oh, that's perfect. Quest a chest. Can't use the shift right click, shift left click for this. And there we go. Oh, you're not getting power, are you? Okay, fine. Probably stand to add a couple more. Actually... Why don't I move that over... ...to where it'll have power?
There is no overkill, there's only open fire, and I need to reload. Especially when a single strike can cripple your train network until you've run out of stone. I'm not that surprised that it's stone that we ran out of first. We have seen a stone bottleneck before. Wait a sec, we've got... We've got stone storage here. Uh, we've got 569,000 stone. Request priority... Wait, quest priority? Oh, that's the drop-off. I'm not used to the drop-off being south. Um, let's see. Seven stacks for each chest. Provide stack threshold 40. No minimum train length. Train length 4. There should be be... Trains should be able to pick up from here. So, what's going on? Maybe they are and I just haven't seen it? Thank you for the follow, uh, Karen Dashius. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. WTF is that contraption? Uh, which contraption? The storage or something else? Oh, it's probably... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because there's already a train scheduled to come here. But it's not currently being picked up from over there. That's why. And we know... It... Well, okay. I was going to say we know it's working because it's not completely full. But uh, seeing this train pick up stone from storage definitely tells us that it is working. That chest array... Uh, it's storage, that's all. Uh, I made it, I made sort of a universal design here, whereby... Uh, okay, so here's a digital display, That's takes a while to explain how it works. But, uh, let's see. I actually set it up so that all you have to do to configure this for whatever resource is... Uh, put into the constant combinator one stack of whatever resource it is that goes here. Uh, and then that multiplies by a lot. So negative 115, uh, 11,520 times the stack size, uh, because we have 240 times 48. Yeah, that's how many stacks uh, of whatever item we can store here. So the negative number tells LTN that we're asking for that much of that resource to be delivered here. Um, setting the type of item and the stack size also sets the filters on these inserters, so that's one less step when you're setting this up. Uh, at the end of this we've also got just a little something to uh, to rebalance it so that we can have small trains and large trains take from here. Which would be a lot easier with the big containers. You could have them swap items. Um, and that's basically it. The fact that provide stack threshold and request stack threshold exists uh, is obviously very useful for this. Uh, but yeah, we've got like literally a million iron, uh, a million steel in storage. Currently we have about 
How much? 784,000 copper plate. So it's going to be a while before we run out. Alright, so we got power connected here again. We should see these trains in motion. Uh, this is a bit of a bottleneck considering the current situation. It's This copper mine as well also allows multiple trains to be on the way to the, that station at the same time. So now they're all taking turns getting out of each other's way. And down here somewhere... Way down here somewhere... Uh, is a stone train or two? Yep. So that should be all it takes to fix that problem. Let's send our construction spiders back to the mall before I forget where to find them. And I should also check on our military spiders. Didn't mean to leave them hanging around out here. How much ammo do they have? A decent amount still. Let's get them... Uh, I actually want them to focus on the area where the pollution clouds are. That base is a bit bigger. Let's be careful. And since we're so close, let's resupply after that. Okay, so stone. I forgot that's why we were mucking about down on Malvis. Um, it is going to take a little while before we can see this thing in action. There's only 6.4k here, even if I did want to salvage it. I guess I could go and grab some. Uh, but we don't even have all of the space manufactories here yet. We are finally trying to make them again. I forgot about the cosmic water. Okay. Why don't we get these out of the way? And I need some more fluid drop-offs for this place. Could probably stand to get rid of... Oh no, there was a reason I had these robopots here, but I think it was just to drop off the old flat solar panels. Which it looks like we're finished with. I'll just leave those here for now. Okay. I want to f make sure I leave some room for different fluid drop-offs here. Uh, lubricant and cosmic water are the ones that I know we're going to need for some of the things we want to automatically make here. So let's put... Let's just put another train stop right about here. This is a bit messy, it's not in the middle like it should be. Wait, is this rail... This rail doesn't actually exist, does it? We need the uh, spiders up there. And train stop can go here. Drop off goes here somewhere. And 
we're going to need... Does that line up? Oh, perfect. Hmm. I could probably just... Leave these, like, so... So that one's going to be cosmic water. I'm hoping we can have uh, different pipe inputs all pointing at the different fluid inputs for the space manufactories. And have that work without having to use the crafting combinator setting that deletes fluids. We'll see. Uh, for now, that was one tile off. So close and yet so far. Especially after using that uh, 15 tile pipe. Just going to do it this way for now. No, that's too sinful. How about a 9 and a 5? We're going to request... Um, if I can figure out where this goes. Should we actually copy this? Change that. Uh, what are we doing? Cosmic water. 26k. Don't forget to connect this up so LTN knows what's already here. And make sure we power the pumps. How is. Oh, that's out of the logistic network now. Okay. Don't forget this corner. And it shouldn't be too long unless we've got a shortage. We do. I'm not too surprised by that. I saw it earlier. Um, we have been making a lot of blank data cards. Although... Yeah, it does add up. I was thinking about how the fluid gets recycled, but it does consume it directly. Actually, no. Five cosmic water becomes five contaminated cosmic water, and a hundred of that becomes 99 cosmic water. So, where exactly is our cosmic water going? Not entirely sure. Uh, what I might do just temporarily is set the lowest possible provide and request threshold over here so we get so we get a delivery as soon as possible. That is switched on, connected to the input. Oh, there we go. Nope, that's stone. Oh, I see. It's the station name. Uh, cosmic Water Requester. There we go. Do we have enough small fluid trains? Do we have any small fluid trains? I thought we did. Uh, 
Apparently not. Okay then. Let's fix that, shall we? And copy this one. Fantastic. Let's do that again. This one doesn't seem to be lined up with... Oh, nope, 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 nope. How do I... Uh, what's that key that no one ever remembers exists? Disconnect rolling stock. No rolling stock found for connect. That was G. Uh, F? V? No? V. Okay, so I need to go over that. Let's try using the navsat. Oh, it's disconnecting the wrong one. Well, that's fine for now. Off you go. Uh, this train is sort of in the way, though. Really? Oh, come on, that's just rude. Did you just deliver one rocket fuel? Okay, we're definitely bumping that number up. Uh, 160... make it 1600. And the request threshold... request stack threshold. I could probably bump that up a bit. Alright, cool. Now then, can I... There we go. Got it. It's V and G. Also, for some reason this isn't lined up well enough. I'm gonna have to go over there to fix that. But hey, we got stone. That's nice. Okay. Uh, the bots just stole those trains away from me already. That's fine. And copy settings. To the depot you go. Fantastic. So we should have cosmic water being delivered here shortly. Request threshold is one. Short trains only. Provide threshold is... I think a train took it already. I just have this intuition that that's what happened. Okay. But... If a train took it... It should be here. But it's not. I think a train took the cosmic water somewhere else. Playing around with the, uh... Why is there so much cosmic water here available to pick up? Provide stack threshold, provide threshold, encoded network ID. The XQZ. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Provide priority 100. Provide threshold 100k. We have 199,000 cosmic water here. Um, encoded network ID is 2. This one doesn't have an encoded network ID. So, oh, I think it's the train length. Yeah. 
I made... I made this long trains only because... Because we'd be picking up the scrap in the long trains. Hmm... How much scrap do we actually spit out of this? Uh, 173 per second. No wonder I made it long train only. If there was only a way to make it so that... Minimum train length, if we've got the... F uh, minimum train length for the fluid, I would like to be 3. And I'd like the minimum train length for the scrap to be 6. We could say if scrap is greater than some amount, bump up the minimum train length, but that's not great, obviously. I could add a storage system for fluids. So this so a long train could take from that and then a short train could take from the storage. Uh, the bonus of doing that is it would also solve another problem. Occasionally we make a mistake or something weird happens with LTN. Like this, actually. Where we've got a request for just over one train load of low density structures. And somehow, this is never getting emptied, even though we've got room for more than that. I guess I should have made this, like, 8,100 or something. So, that, so all this has to be almost completely empty before we send for another train. Or we need... A balanced unloader specifically for this which is a bit of a nuisance but we could definitely fit it in there but yeah that's definitely illustrating the point occasionally we will end up with a fluid train sitting around confused about where it's going it would be nice to have somewhere to send it to and then if we do have a storage system for those fluids um, Having this accessible by a short train with extra steps would be helpful. Um, but also, how is it? How is our cosmic water so slow anyway? It's literally just water and lubricant. We've got plenty of heavy oil. Does that mean we don't have ice? Okay, that's terrifying. Where's our ice? Do you have shorter trains that have wagons? Yes. Can you put another train stop for the fluid only in front of the exit, the existing one? I did think about that. The only reason I don't want to do it is just aesthetically, basically. Also, if I can find a clever way to do it with circuits or whatever, that's more cool. Uh, Short Shadow Plus and Misdirect Down Under. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so now the question is, where is our ice? We've got Cryonite. Um, we know from just a little while ago we're still ore mining the stuff. Uh, it is in motion. We've actually gotten down to the point where there isn't a train load of cryonite here. Possibly because... Well, 
we're not doing the fast version of the balanced loader here? No? Something's wrong. Each divided by negative 24, output each. Read hand contents, hold. I don't think we're supposed to read hand contents for this. There we go. Uh, this is stopped anyway. Wow. I'm pretty sure Cryonite Core Fragments, uh, were actually full a while ago. So it's actually gotten to the point where we need to increase our throughput of Cryonite Core Fragments. But I'm not going to assume that's the only issue. Let's double check. Our production area for ice is actually lacking water. Uh, there is a pipe missing. That's not helpful. Let's uh, send our construction spiders over there. Constructor trunks. But is that the only issue? There's no water here whatsoever. Even though there's a train stop that is not requesting anything, actually. But I think it is also connected to pumps directly from a water source. Uh, it is possible those were disconnected. Yeah, it looks like it. So it, it must have just taken a long time uh, to run out of ice. It's because this isn't powered. Alright, that should fix it. I hope. Although one wonders how our cryonite core fragments got down to that level if... We haven't been making ice. Uh, we've only got 6.7k plus 11k ice here. How's our train problems up here looking? Totally fine. Fantastic. Trying to think, is there a way of using LTN networks to separate the traffic? I don't think so. And have train lengths different? Yeah, train different train lengths on the same spot, uh, same stop, uh, get a little complicated. Um, well, more to the point, it's because it's these two different resources as well. Uh, having different train lengths pick up for fluid is obviously not a problem whatsoever. Uh, the way we're usually doing different train lengths at pickup stations is just to limit these chests to seven stacks. And we don't summon a train of any length unless there's enough for the longest train. Uh, that does obviously slow things down a bit sometimes. If we have to pick up like multiple train station uh, trains worth of LDS in a short time, it's not going to be so great if we have to all pick it up from this station. Uh, if we're doing it that way, we could also do a balanced loader and set the provide stack threshold considerably higher but the thing is once it gets particularly imbalanced if you're using a balanced loader circuit uh, it can actually sort of exacerbate it because each individual inserter is just going off of an average versus what's in its own chest Ideally, uh, I would go for the 6x6 containers and have them swap resources. Except I'm not using them for this playthrough. 
Uh, but in the case of this pickup station, uh, I wanted it to be long trains only because scrap throughput from here is so fast when it's used. But considering it's not flowing at all at the moment, I think what I should actually do is what I did with the other physical drop-off station. It's worth a try. If when everything is flowing faster, it turns out that's a bad idea, uh, we can revisit it. So... We're going to limit these to seven stacks each. Uh, so if there's enough for one train load, it should be ready to go. Short trains are allowed. And we should see a short fluid wagon picking up cosmic water from here fairly soon. There it goes. Uh, but also... It's just as well I discovered that we're not getting ice up here. The depot can be set to another network, maybe? Uh, yes. If you have... Let me back up a second. I'm trying to think, is there a way... If you have only six length wagon trains and three, four length fluid on another network, you may be able to do three min and six max. Uh... This is a tentative opinion, but what I've been finding, because I've only come up with a couple of ideas, I mean, they all have their own downsides, um, but particularly coming from the cargo landing pads, I don't mind using this method. Uh, but having different train lengths able to pick up from pickup stations, uh, I've only really been doing that in the space rail network so far. I think I've patched it into one or two things down on Nalvis. Um, so I don't have that much experience adding this to the rail network. But uh, tentatively, what I want to say is pickup stations can accept trains of any length. But it seems like a bad idea to have drop-offs uh, that can use trains of any length. Because you get things happening like a long train dropping off a very small amount of items. I think it's probably better. Yeah, here's a good example. A long train is picking up 4.3k iron plate. I'd love to set it up so that even on the same train stop, uh, we're only using long trains if we're filling them up or something. Um, but it's probably better just to have a long train drop off and a short train drop off. Anyway, we finally got our cosmic water. Fantastic. That means we can make the uh, space manufactories. Unfortunately, we've got some other stuff we need to make, and the, apparently we're out of red circuits? That can't be right. Wait, what? Oh, it's putting in other... S it's putting in 400 and... Good grief. We're going to put in 600 electronic circuits before we make, like, two stack inserters, and then we're going to switch to another recipe, I bet. 700 and... Oh my goodness. Why is it like this? 900? 1,000? Is it still going on those two resources? Uh, it is. Okay. I hope we're making more than two stack 
it just switched to recipe. Oh, I see what's happening. Stack inserter put in advanced circuits. It made 10 stack inserters practically instantly. And then the stack inserter went back to putting in green circuits. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well. That little, that little blink and you miss it moment where the, uh, the bar is at 100%. That's literally making 10 stack inserters. <laughs> yeah, this could probably go a bit faster if we had a more intelligent system with inserters and stuff. Putting things into machines. Well, maybe it would be a good idea to have some dedicated machines to make inserters. Or I could use the space manufactories to make space manufactory specific things. And use something like this for everything else. In any case, that stuff will get done eventually, but I'm not thrilled about how long it's taking um, to get some space manufacturers. At least pipes get done quickly. Why am I not seeing the count for how many pipes we're trying to make drop down? Probably because they're going to all the spiders. Alright, let's have a look at... Oh! Nice. Except I'm not seeing any outputs up here. Why is that? Uh, because the balanced unloader has stopped this one. Oh, are those already in the chests? No. Products finished, zero. Then how... Oh, it's because this is barely started and this isn't powered. Okay. Let's get this at least a little bit in motion with the missing space manufactories. I wonder if I could do like a priority system where we have two or three lists of items to build and then we only switch over when those are complete. To the next tier. Yeah, that's why the number wasn't going down. The bots were taking the uh, pipes straight away. Okay. Uh, let's add some substation. Can we even fit some? Yeah, we just need a couple down here. Let's add a underground. Like so. And over here as well. And then this should be moving quite soon. As soon as... Wait, what? Did I mess up the wiring? 
No, it doesn't look like it. Um, let's see. This red wire, this green wire. 5.6k, 5.5. I think I did the logic backwards. Everything has to be greater than or equal to average. For us to uh, decide to output. Fantastic. Let's just remove that. So instead of a balanced unload between each set of chests, it was only unload from the one that's that gets a head start. Okay. And there we go. That's our uh, material testing packs. And... What do we got here? Uh, this should actually just be one combinator. And we're going to divide by 48 chests. And then make sure these are connected properly. That goes there, and that goes there. Fantastic. That's not looking very balanced. Uh, let's give it a hand, shall we? Also, apparently there's already been a train hit. Oh, hello. Wow. Uh, is that actually a full train? It is too. That is so fast. And how quickly are we going through... Uh... Five point two per second, so like half a stack, more than half a stack per second. Okay then. Seems like we might need stack inserters to output from here as well, because of all the. I should have thought of that. Um, it's actually forty one. Ten point one three. Per second. Uh, inserters, stack inserter, how hard is it to find a stack inserter, there we go, uh, we need, according to this we need half a stack inserter, stack size of 10 doesn't take long, yeah, no, I mean, we have a stack size of 10, so, it's already as fast as... Actually, I'm not sure. If you have a stack size of 12 on the stack inserters, but the actual stack size is 10, I think it's limited to 10 because we don't benefit from... Uh... We don't benefit from stack inserters when we're inserting things like space capsules or cargo rocket sections. Where was I going? What was I... Oh, here it is. Rules, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So we're going to stack insert, or stack outsert if you like. That should keep those empty, or we could just have the stack inserter keep picking up one atomic data at a time until there's too much contaminated scrap. Uh, I think... Okay, when it when it when it keeps picking up contaminated scrap, it works really well. But then, okay, no, we're gonna need a 
a couple of stack inserters for output for each of these. Possibly filtered, but I don't think so. Yeah, that's very easy to keep up with now. Fantastic. Good news everyone, the slime is flowing again. Yes. Stack size of 10 doesn't take long. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. When are you going to apply for partner? You've been hitting decent numbers lately. Uh, I haven't actually thought about that yet. I figured I'd get an email or something as soon as I was eligible. Um, or it doesn't work that way for partner, right? Yay, indeed. Okay, um, was this? It was. I kind of want to wait here and see the train come to pick up the contaminated scrap. Because I'm trying something a little bit different with this train stop. Um... I probably shouldn't, honestly, but I decided to be a bit lazy. Instead of doing the usual precise loader circuit, uh, so that we can have multiple item types picked up from this station, physical item types, uh, instead we're just setting the provide stack threshold to significantly less than a full train. Uh, the pro the priority for this station is very high. So, unless we run out of trains, we should always get a train coming here before we actually get a full train load. 6.2k. 120 times 50. There should already be a train on the way. I don't think this setup is going to work very well. Uh, the idea is, instead of the complicated precise loading circuit, um, just make it so that the train isn't going to have to, uh, isn't going to be full. But if there's going to be any kind of complication that delays the train, for one thing, that's not going to work out so well. Also, I think we would need to set the west threshold lower over here. Except I thought the priority threshold took priority based on what I'd seen happening with fluids over here. We were setting the threshold to 25k and then at stations that had a request threshold for 100k I think we were getting small amounts delivered. Lenny, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, I don't like where this is going. I think even before we get one train to pick up from here, we're going to end up with uh, a full train. And we're going to have these inserters sticking out afterwards, which is a big no-no if there's different resources to unload from the station. Um, where do our junk data cards come from? We actually... definitely have room to just use a different station for the junk data cards, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, definitely. I think we'll do that. Let's see. Oh, that's a lot of junk. Du what? Wait, what? Um, I may have forgotten to take junk data cards into account for this part of the build. 
That is a distinct possibility. Theoretically. How fast does this make junk data cards? Very, very slowly. Yes, indeed. Double. Oh. Um, I'm honestly tempted to just... To just add that filter here. Data card, and then uh, but also I think we're going to get rid of the uh, contaminated scrap. We're about to hit a full train load. Okay, let's turn off this train stop for now. And I'm going to get rid of these for the moment. Stack filter inserters. Wait, which is faster? The contaminated scrap, I presume? 1.8 per second. That's actually not that much. Oh, that's inserters. 41.6 per second. That's very fast. Uh, whereas junk data cards, 5 per second. Okay, good. Because this station is the one that would be blocking this station. So... First thing I want to do... Uh, is get some loaders. That's the wrong one. 24 first. That goes here. And that belt is all blocked up now. Okay, let's put our contaminated scrap over here. Oops. Uh, block the input to this thing. Get some substations. I don't have any personally. Uh, that placement is a little bit tragic. This is fine. And terminated scrap. Get out of here. I'd say once you get to use trains and circuits, since those two concepts make SE more manageable. Indeed. I just launched my first rocket in vanilla default. At what point does someone tackle something like this mod? It looks intimidating. Uh, definitely after you've launched your first rocket. Uh, Launching a rocket in vanilla is like the end point, unless you're into making mega bases. Um, in space exploration, it's kind of the beginning. Haven't even started with all those yet. Just forced... You just forced the overflow onto one side of that belt. Yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, with, if I was going to do it that way, with the rate of the junk data cards, it would have been okay. But I'm not going to do it that way, actually. Playing SpaceX as a step up from vanilla? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and it's not just like the size and scale or anything. Uh, the complexity of the sciences really jumps up once you get into space. Uh, I did it as much of an exercise as anything else. 
and I definitely wouldn't have built it this big if I'd noticed that um, space rail only costs 60 energy science pack ones. But I did make a main bus base designed to support one space manufactory with no speed modules uh, for each of the tier one space sciences. Uh, and this is it. It took quite a lot, honestly. Uh, and there's so many resources going back and forth. You've got lots of lots of recipes that have outputs other than the thing that you're looking for. So you've got all this... Well, in this case, there's some recycled iridium plate. Uh, but you've got all this scrap and contaminated fluids and stuff like that that you don't actually want, or at least for the purpose you're building this thing, you don't want it uh, coming out that you have to send back somewhere else to deal with. Uh, in a rail block system, that is far less of a headache to deal with, but doing it with belts, kind of tricky. Crustorio 2 is a nice step up from vanilla, I suppose. Uh, this is actually backed up as well, which is not helping us get rid of that contaminated scrap. I might just have to store some of it. Also... I think we might just use both sides. Wait, why are there blank data cards in here? Hang on, does this spit out blanks as well? No. Was this running? There shouldn't be blank data cards on this belt. Or at least I don't want there to be. There's none of it over here. No, good, fantastic. Chuck that in there. Blank data cards. Just put that there for now. Now then, can we possibly use both sides of this belt? I tried SpaceX and it was too much for me, so I'm playing Crestoria 2 now. Fair enough. Mad Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And uh, welcome, Duven, also. Uh, the inserters can keep up, that's fine. Are we still not... We still haven't run out of those input resources. Uh, so this is going to be contaminated scrap pickup. Contaminated scrap. Uh, 160 long trains. Connect to here. Whoops, that's the wrong one. That would actually do basically nothing. There we go. That goes to the logistic train stop input. I guess we can change this part now. Uh, how about this? I'm 
it back down to like half a... I have an idea. Even distribution. And there we go. So how much contaminated scrap do we have here? 1,000. Uh, that's going to take... Wait, what? Oh yeah, that's... That should take like 22 seconds to drain, supposedly. Although, as we get closer to running out, the inserters won't be as fast. Unless I did my math wrong somehow. Already got a train picking up the contaminated scrap. Oh, and we want some signals over here as well. Probably would have done SpaceX before my current run if I'd heard about it sooner. Yeah, I'm definitely, uh... Definitely glad I got into streaming Factorio, or I wouldn't have got into space exploration. Or at least it might have taken a lot longer. Alright, we finally got rid of our contaminated scrap. Now then. Uh, let's refactor this, shall we? And have we stopped outputting from here? Fantastic. Get rid of this. Wait. That's not quite right. Oh, uh, close enough. Splitter goes here. Contaminated scrap. Whoops. Goes here. I blame you for getting into this mess. Fair enough. I guess I'm a vector for the space exploration virus. Uh, this goes here. Glad to hear. I did not want to pick up atomic data. There we go. Okay. Uh, I suppose it would be quicker if I just... ...balanced it like this. That's weird. Why is... Oh, that makes sense, actually. Just looking at the way this uh, particular balanced loader works, whereby, well, this is no longer a good example because of what I just did, but over here, you can see that it keeps an even number of each uh, resource while doing a balanced load for two items at the same time. Uh, the reason I thought something was off was because there's one... Uh, subatomic data on the belt here, which at first I thought would mean it would be picking stuff up, but no, this one has more subatomic data than the other chests. The gateway dealer of Factorio. <laughs> uh, thank you, I guess? I don't know. Um, so we don't need to use filter inserters for these ones now. No fancy circuitry for this one. It's very straightforward. Uh, we do actually need to tell LTM that there's thermo fluid here. That would probably help. And I don't think we have yet a uh, A block that deals with chunk data cards. We could do a balanced loader circuit here, but we're literally getting like five of these per second if this is going at full speed all the time. 
So I think it'll be sufficient to just... Actually, if I do four or five chests per cargo wagon, um, we can fit exactly one train load of... Um, or even if I just do four, that's probably more than enough. Yeah, let's let's do that. So we don't need a balanced loader. Why don't I just pick these up? There's not that many of them. Much easier. Okay. So we're gonna one, two, three, four. Limit to the equivalent of a cargo wagon. There's your low-tech balanced loader. And we're good. This is looking a bit... Oh. Wait, what? Oh, this... Yeah, 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 these need to be filter inserters if we're going to do it this way. Okay, um... What is this called? Quantum Phenomenon Data. And then we need to remove all these junk data cards. There we go. And normally there wouldn't be anywhere near as many junk data cards on the belt here. I think? What's the ratio? Um, it's like one to one, actually. Okay. Theoretically, this could get jammed. I think. Maybe. What's the rate? Like, less than five? It's three per second for each. Okay, I think with that kind of throughput, this is never going to be a problem. But theoretically, we should put one type of item on each side of that belt. Possibly. Jump data goes here. And... That's a little sad. That's not going to reach, is it? about nope. how close do I need this to be there we go signal for junk cards amounts into station yes Alright, so now if we want this to be symmetrical, one, two, th one, two, three tiles. Two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh. There we go. Is that five tiles? It is. Uh, I guess if we're going to be consistent, we'll do that. Auto save. Okay. So, change the name of this station. Wait, there's also regular scrap here? Oh, that's right. There was going to be if we... No? Hold on. 
Junk data card. Contaminated scrap. Junk data card. Contaminated scrap and junk data card. Okay. So there isn't actually ever any regular scrap from here. Gotta love the Picker Dollies mod? Absolutely. It's, it's definitely one of my favourite mods. Like, top tier must have quality of life. Uh, this train would probably be loading faster if there were any inserters. Probably. But that's just, like, my opinion, man. Fantastic. Well, now we know we're never going to have any problems with uh, the loader getting broken here. Uh, this one remains to be seen, but I... I've done this before. I don't think we'll have too many problems. Okay. So, what is next? Let's go check what our mall has finished building. Uh, it's finished making the space manufactories, which is great. I kind of want to bump this up to like... 50. And we were building this, it is finished except for some ghosts. We had some trains deliver, that's why we were doing this. Oh, I need to turn this around. So now we've got every prerequisite, what well, we've got every card anyway, every data for Energy Science Pack 2, except for force field data. Uh, but giving that its own block, it's not going to be too difficult. Three physical inputs, 10 second crafting time. Uh, three in plus fluid. Four out plus fluid. It's just going to be a bit of a nuisance doing the stations and stuff for this one. Um, but other than that, it's really not going to be that difficult. Although, maybe I could... Maybe I could make the uh, electromagnetic field and polarization data on the spot. That will be needed to support the force field data. Electromag and polarization. This one has junk data as an output. This one has junk data and scrap. And the force field data itself has junk data and contaminated scrap. So we're going to be spitting out all three kinds of scrap and blank data cards. So that's four, not counting the fluid. Uh, and there's also negative 10 degree thermofluid, but I think we'll do what we did here and just have a local hypercooler so that we get the negative 100 back and some 25 degree as the unwanted output. So, one fluid and four physical outputs other than the product that we actually want. It's going to be a little bit of a nuisance. Also, depending on the size and speed of the assembly, uh, of the 
facilities that we need to use. Uh, it might or might not fit very well altogether. We'll see. So, 130, no wait, uh, 28 of these, okay, it's going to be 180 material testing packs per second, theoretically. I forgot to remove a couple of these so that the, uh, the max rate isn't, like, faster than the belts. Let's call it like 170 material testing packs per second. That's um, 17 stacks per second. And we've got uh, 1152 stacks. So it'll take a bit over a minute, theoretically, if this thing's going full speed to completely fill these, uh, chests. You also need a block to create the signs. Yes, of course. So why isn't this moving now? We've got iron, copper, plastic, and stone. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned, to be honest. Seems that problem... That potential problem I talked about earlier uh, is showing itself far more severely than I thought possible. Hmm. Did I change this wrong? No, I think that's right. How can I keep it somewhat balanced, but also do it this way? Maybe I should just not... Uh, I was going to say not worry about balancing and balanced unloading it too much and just set the train, set the item requests low enough. But I don't think that's going to work for too long. Is the iron plate missing from here as well? Maybe one of the belts aren't lined up. No, I think if one of the belt weren't lined up, we wouldn't have got a couple of train loads of um, of boxes down here. So what's actually going on? Wait a sec. How can... That doesn't make sense. Surely not all four of them were stopped at the same time. I could do the latch style balanced unloader, but... Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try an experiment. We're just going to let these go full speed and see what happens. I think I know the answer. But we'll see. Should be okay as long as we never actually get close to full with the drop-off stations. 
Maybe? But we're probably going to end up with, um... Even though theoretically they should all consume at the same speed, I feel like we're going to end up with some cargo wagon far more full than the others. Also not sure how I just saw a trickle of plastic down here. Did we not? Oh, there we go. Must have missed it. leaving anything to chance think of an think of it as an blah, blah, blah. think of it as an experiment is the input for that still cut cut oh as in like broken missing This should be full in literally like a minute or two anyway. Back to the blocks that I actually want to work on. Uh, I guess down here makes as much sense as anywhere else for where we're going to do the... Uh, I wanted to say quantum, that's not right. Force field data. But first, I just want to drop off some more of these particle accelerators. We are automating those, right? Uh, possibly not. Electromagnetics facility... I should really organize these a bit better. But... Particle accelerator. Okay. Let's head back down this way. Actually, I probably shouldn't have done that. I'm going to need laser facilities and electromagnetics. That's going to be fine. Let's check on Nalvis. Send our military spiders on an outing. It's about time, actually. supply already. What else have we got? I feel like there was... Oh, that's right. We wanted to get that water flowing again, which it looks like we did. So ice is being produced. Fantastic. Quite quickly. Pretty much as fast as the water can keep up. I see uh, significantly less than a train load of ice in either of these stations, which tells me... Okay, we are hard prioritizing this one, but yeah, that tells me we haven't caught up with our demand for ice, or at least 
the copious storage that we have available for it. But I do see cosmic water gradually increasing over here again, so that's something. Wait, does this not have... There's no speed modules over here. Um, that is suboptimal, considering that for now that is what our entire base is depending on. I'll get the spiders to pick up some items, head back down here, while I drop off some speed modules. Rocket reusability 10. Gradually ticking along. Guessing we're out of Astro. That's actually going pretty fast. Nice. But that would be what we're bottlenecking on, I presume. Yes. Yes, indeed. Alright. Away we go. And... What was I doing? Speed modules. Fantastic. Now what about the ratios? We need only 20 lubricant per second. 2,000 water per second <laughs> for these machines to go full speed. Uh, I do believe we are now bottlenecking on the water. Which is not too surprising. Uh, we actually need two pipes of water to come down this way. If we're gonna go that fast. I could actually... Wait, is that also water? Where is this going? Wow. Okay. I think it's gonna be a while before this gets sulfur again. Not that it needs it. Um, but yeah, there's actually... You could probably connect water over here somewhere. It's too long. And over here. There should be bots on the way to build that already. Uh, I see yellow. Fantastic. So once that's done, we should see a dramatic increase in cosmic water production. Did you just connect it to the lube tanks? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, no, 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 I didn't. It would have to be here. Um, we just went around that corner bit. I guess I could wait till the bots get here just to make sure. They are currently crawling along. There's our nine... Is a uh, 15, I think. It's a 9 Cool. Now then. Spiders. Go place some more scaffolding, please. Oh, 
I wish you could point at ghosts and see if bots are on their way. That would be very useful. I don't see any more yellow bots in flight. Uh, that could be a problem. I guess I could get the spiders to come up here. They're a little busy. But on the other hand, the sooner we get the cosmic water getting produced, the better. But I thought we had a bunch of pipe stored up here. It seems like we've run out of specific types of it. Yeah, it's mostly just regular pipe that's left. Uh, that is a lot of packed cargo rocket sections just lying around. I really need to pack up this old base at some point. There's so much to move around, though. Okay. Seems we've moved on. Why are we making substations right now? Well, I'm not too worried about it. Um, I think I will turn pipe production and inserters back on as long as that's going to take, but it's now fire and forget. Get the spiders to... You know what? Um, I think... I think I will fill out all of this scaffolding. It's all of the gaps here as well, because I'm tired of pathing the spiders around this stuff. Uh, so... How big can we go? That's bigger than I expected. It's still going. We can... We can fill a rail block in one click. It's actually enough to pause the game for a second. <laughs> oh my goodness. That wasn't what I was expecting. Stretch will be pleased, <laughs> indeed. Okay. Get rid of that. And this, and this. It'll be a little bit of a chore filling some of this out. But it'll be nice to not have to carefully click to tell the spiders to go places. There's probably some scaffolding up in this robo network as well. Get the bots to help a bit if that's the case. I could always send some scaffolding into this robo network. Oh, I think I see it. Is actually 33,000 already. So that whole area is going to get filled out eventually. And there's our water. Fantastic. So we've got three of these going full speed. One of them's taking a nap most of the time. That gives us 156 cosmic water per second. There's a smaller number than I expected, but... Well, it just is a smaller number than I expected, actually. Hopefully it's enough to catch up... ...with the amount that we're using at this point. Uh, a 
I'm surprised I'm not seeing every construction bot here placing scaffolding as well. They're probably going to do it in a sudden wave. It's just the way Factorio spreads out the bot orders when there's a lot going on. Spreads them out over time so that they don't uh, make the computer cry, that is. Oops. Oh, they're all becoming stretchy. Let's get this one following the leader again, if I can find it. Stretchy legs. Rubber Band Brigade? Yeah. And there go our construction bots. Or it might mostly be because it's coming from the spiders as well. I think they're a higher priority or something. The yellow ones are coming from the robot network. The stationary one, that is. Okay. Um... I don't see any of them building scaffolding over here. Even though there's 33k in storage. Even though there's 306 construction bots. It's kind of weird to be honest. Let's just jump in the leader so that I don't mess up the following stuff whenever I press a movement button. And... Have they got scaffolding? Yeah. Actually, how full is their inventory? Not very. Let's get them to carry more scaffolding. How about 200 each? Can't tell which spider that was. There we go. Perfect. And that should get this built a bit quicker. So where are we going to start with this uh, force field data? We could either just have three inputs from the train block. Okay. I'm going to decide this based on whether polarization data and electromagnetic data um, is used in anything else. Polarization data. Right click. Goes into energy catalog and force field data and nothing else. Huh. I wasn't expecting that. Electromagnetic field data. How do I go back to search? Oops. Electromagnetic field data goes into four things. Energy shield. Okay. That's not like a science thing though, not a high throughput demand. Oh wait, is this electromagnetic field data? Okay. Uh, energy catalog, force field data, magnetic pole data. 
I'm kind of tempted to just... I don't know. I haven't got enough information to decide which feels better. Having a block or more blocks to make the prerequisite data or doing it locally. It is an awful lot more stuff to deal with. Well, actually, if I do all of the prerequisites for this, uh, the electromagnetic field data and the polarization data in the same block, that actually just bumps up the number of physical unwanted outputs from three to four. But the number of inputs goes from three to uh, one plus two total. Where's the other one? Polarization. Three physical inputs. It's the same number of physical inputs. Blank data, multispectral mirror, and holmium cable versus holmium cable and the two types of data. And since this stuff consumes blank data, we could probably belt the... Oh, we always get a blank data card back from this. That's interesting. So we get one blank data card. Out of the two data cards we put in, we get one blank data card and a small chance for force field data? No. 50% force field data, 49%. That doesn't look right. Alright, well let's figure out the ratios tentatively decide what's going where. We're going to need multispectral mirrors, blank data cards, a bunch of laser facilities. That's not laser facilities. might look something like this. Uh, the other one is electromagnetic, which I have a feeling is going to take up more space. Just a hunch. Maybe I should copy-paste this whole thing, actually. Might make more sense. Are we there yet? Spaceships? Uh, five minutes. Maybe six. Okay. Uh, this would give us... 3.1 polarization data per second. This is 2.96. So if we want three force field data per second, it's made in an electromagnetic facility. Force field data. We're looking at. 23 of these. Yikes. But I think we've probably got enough space left over to pull it off. More faster? More faster. Alright, let's tentatively say our target is 3 per second. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to copy this whole thing, and we'll edit it a bit if necessary. Oh 
hold on, that didn't add any electromagnetic facilities. So we're going 2.96, I guess. 2.99? 23. Okay. Girth? Yes. Girthy throughput. Alright, uh, a whopping three per second. Train stop goes here and here. So, so it was Holmium cable, blank data cards, and mirrors, wasn't it? We've got a long train for mirrors, I believe. That's good. Wait, why isn't that saturated? We're missing chemical gel. Oh, because this train got stuck forever. That's why. Okay. We could do blank data cards and multi-spectral mirrors here, and bring the blank data cards over this way. What's the max rate of blank data cards? Six per second plus 3.46 per second plus three. Okay, so it's all going to fit on one belt. Uh, quite easily, actually. I think we'll do it like this again. Something similar for multi-spectral mirrors. Uh, just to double check. Mirrors are even slower. Oh, that's in the wrong spot. Thought that looked odd. And I'm never carrying substations these days. I keep forgetting to turn my personal logistics on. Let's bring the spiders back. How did I do this one? Do I want to change the design at all? I don't think so. I think that's pretty good, actually. Okay, then. In that case... Probably put it oops, somewhere like here. We will need to get a half belt for each of these resources. Um, what would be the best way to do this? That can go there. That goes there. I'm gonna have to move this back a tile. Possibly. This isn't gonna turn out as elegant as I hoped it would. Wait, maybe if. Oops. 
Maybe if we do it like this. Yeah, that's much better. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, I can't flip this, but... I can flip this part. I think. to save. Alright, so that goes there tentatively. And we're going to need polarization data going straight to this thing. Hold on, how fast are these individually? Uh, very slow. We can use long arms for the holmium cable. Or we could use long arms for the data, actually. That would make more sense. Not that it's going to make much of a difference. Um, what's the other inputs that we need? Ion stream and coolant. Negative a hundred, uh, negative a hundred, and negative two seventy-three. Negative two seventy-three is not what I was hoping to hear, but I can probably be able to figure it out somehow. Definitely need to move this down at least a little bit. In fact, could I put this closer to this stuff, perhaps? Maybe... Maybe I'll end up doing it... this way. We'll see. Let's pump. Where are my pumps? There we go. Right. So that's two fluid drop-offs. We'll do coolant there. And why not put the ion stream... How fast do we go through the ion stream? 13 per second. That's 143 per second. Old Thermo is only 28. Supercooled is 60. Cold Thermo is 3 per second, really. So it's really not that fast. Taking that into consideration, it should probably... Oh, it won't actually matter. That's good. So I'm going to... I think I'm going to do a station on the side to drop off the ion stream. And we're probably going to use the station on the side as well to get rid of one of the uh, types of scrap. I'm more and more tempted to think I should have had a block that deals with every type kind of scrap and junk and stuff. What is happening here? First of all, why did you pick up only 30k if the request threshold is 100k? Second of all, if we're asking for... Oh, I see the problem. Or part of the problem, anyway. Actually, no, this should be connected over here. It is not. As well. Okay, then. Is it okay to just leave that train there for a while? If we've got contaminated scrap coming in which we do, 
it should use some cosmic water. Maybe not enough to get that train out of the way anytime soon. I've never gotten into circuits. What's the difference between red and green? Uh, red and green what? Like the wires or some kind of signal? The wires. Oh, okay. That's just two separate channels. So like, how, what would be the best way to illustrate this? Um, let's put a power pole. Actually, give me some substations. I'm going to steal some from the spiders. There we go. Uh, so... Actually, I'll just start with constant combinators. Here we're going to say... Steel. And here we're going to say iron. We're going to connect the red wire to iron. And the green wire to steel. And you can see that on the red wire we've got one iron plate. On the green wire we've got one steel. Um, you can use this also to bring two different signals to, uh, for example, a combinator without, like, crossing those signals together, if that makes sense. So, if you've got some other circuitry up here using that green wire, the iron plate signal from here isn't going to interfere with that. Um, also, on the separate wires, you can implicitly do addition and subtraction. Uh, that goes for anything that'll bring some signals together into one place. So here I've got one iron plate on the green wire, one iron plate on the red wire. Uh, and you can see where it says input signals. Uh, even though if you look at it on a substation, uh, on a power pole or something, it's two separate signals. Uh, once you bring it into a combinator, that's actually just a combined input. Uh, so combining inputs implicitly does addition and subtraction, which is something that we take advantage of uh, when we're using a typical balanced loader circuit. Uh, so we will... We'll get a positive number for what's in these chests. And then we'll do something with that. Or rather, the, the way I like to do it these days is we use math to get a negative average of what's in these six chests divided by negative six. Uh, let me put some stuff in here. I'll just put... 50 of these in one chest, so that's not divisible by 6, though. Okay, so our average is 10. We're going to spit out negative 10 from this. Um, we're getting a positive number from the red wire directly to that inserter of 60 productivity modules. But we're getting a negative number, a negative 10, coming out of uh, this one. So on this inserter in particular, if we connect these wires up so we can see what that value is, uh, you can see red 60, green negative 10. Or if it goes into a combinator or an inserter or something. It'll just add it together. And that drops down to 50. Uh, so we don't have to say like, each divided by 6 output A for average. And then 
uh, whatever the item is has to be less than or equal to A to pick this up. We can just say uh, that it, whatever it is has to be less than or equal to zero, because that would be average. And then you can start doing things like allowing an inserter to go a bit ahead of the average without adding in an extra constant combinator. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Um, do you think it would be useful to have more colors? Absolutely. Just earlier today I was wishing I had a blue wire for something. Um, it was like... I think it was something like I wanted to connect one more wire to a setup like this just to see what's in the first six chests, the one that go in the, the ones that would go into the cargo wagon of a short train. Um, because that would be very useful for you know, for deciding if a short or a long train can come and pick things up or something like that. Um yeah, a third wire colour would be amazing. I'm sure if we had three, I would occasionally want more than that, but you do run into issues where, oh, there's only so much I can do, at least in this limited space, with two types of wires. I don't do circuits a lot, so I can't say if it's a limitation or not. I think you're probably going to be... Un unless you're sort of keeping it in mind to begin with, you're probably going to be pretty deep into your journey of... Uh, learning circuits before you find yourself thinking an extra wire would be very useful here. Do you require that substation though, or can you just go straight to the combinator? You can go straight to the combinator. The substation is only here for illustration. So we'll get rid of that. And you can see the input signals uh, the input signals going into this decider combinator are the same that are going into this inserter. We're just using the decider combinator because you can see the input signals on the right side of the screen. And say T-hex is the 0.000001% of circuit users? Maybe? I mean, there's definitely people with the right education uh, that could do more impressive things than I do. Although, I suspect I have, uh, even if I say so, kind of a sweet spot between competence and being able to explain it to people in relatively sim simple language. Um, but yeah, does that sort of... Uh, does that answer your questions about the whys so far, or did anything I say go a bit far. I agree, I see people trying to make it work out of luck. <laughs> Arrow in Gluttonous Maximus has done amazing circuits. Sounds interesting. I actually have a f had a friend who uh, I, I couldn't understand it, and to be fair, I guess, this was a long time ago now, and certainly my skills with circuits have progressed, but, like, uh, supposedly they made basically LTN with vanilla Factorio circuits. And I have absolutely no idea how they pulled that off. Uh, but I mean... It should be possible to make a computer with Factorio circuits. Um, theoretically, you could do anything with them, although it would be incredibly UPS taxing and space inefficient. I, I've seen uh, I've seen an image depicting how big a sine function is, or it was it was sine or cosine or tangent or maybe all three. Uh, built with Factorio circuits, and it was like, I I don't remember exactly how big it was, but suffice to say, I would not be using that 
for what I had in mind for the AAI mod. It's apparently actually some really complicated math to pull that off. Always took that for granted, plugging, plugging it into the calculator. 3D raster engine, Pac-Man, very, very slow, but amazing to watch. Yeah. I understand it's just understanding the combinators and all that now. Um, yeah, the... Uh, I feel like... Okay, I haven't actually checked if Factorio has like a good tutorial for combinators or anything. Uh, in a long time, but... There's definitely a lot... There's some real important fundamentals and basics, or stuff that stuff that I could tell you, like how if you're constantly sending a signal, it's actually sending that signal uh, once per tick, which is 60 ticks per second if the game is running at full speed, and the reason why a memory cell works in Factorio and why it works like, like this, this is totally counterintuitive, I think. Um, if you don't, uh, if you don't know, uh, how this works to begin with, you'd be hard pressed to come up with it yourself. So we've stopped inputting anything to this. We've got N280. Uh, what's happening here? is circuit wires transmit data instantaneously and combinators take exactly one tick to do their thing. So every tick, this is getting an input. The next tick, it outputs something based on that input and we've set the output to just be whatever goes into it. So one tick later, what's coming in here comes out here and instantaneously goes back to its input, which will be processed next tick and so on and so on. Uh, so it looks like it should be like a short circuit or something, but what's actually happening is it's like going around in circles really, really fast. Or perfectly fast, if you like so that it's constantly got the same signal on it. Michael Gwinnett, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I've been up all night. Yikes. Hope you have a good sleep today. Um, yeah, there's certain fundamentals that... Uh, I don't know how you... As I said, unless there's been some tutorial stuff that was added that I didn't notice. Uh, I don't know how you're supposed to figure that out without learning it off the internet or something. Um, and that kind of knowledge is definitely a prerequisite for certain things. Uh, certain Some of the stuff I just said, for example, it's not going to affect you at all if you're making some basic circuits. But maybe sooner or later you're going to run into a problem and you're not going to know why. And if you did know that, you'd be able to figure it out much more easily. I sleep during afternoons. Fair enough. Um, so, I was going to see if I can fit like 23 of these together. Um, it's just got one input, one output for fluids, so we should be able to put these close together. And tentatively put that there. So that's eight. We need like three times this. Let's say we're going to put this up here. Um, that's gonna go there, oops, I remember when I could do that, 
Ah, uh, youth. One idea I was toying with, uh, let me know what you guys think, is... That doesn't need to be a 3B. Uh, maybe one day a week I could specifically make it, like, circuit teaching day or something. Have people come ready with questions. So, if we multiply this by 3, what's our output? It's actually quite low. 20, about 20 items per second for the whole thing. So we should be able to just put all that on the same belt and then filter it after the fact. as well. Three physical inputs. Uh, might have to not do these long pipes like that. Am I the only one hoping you would say, once I week I can stream EU time? <laughs> when is EU time? That's like... I guess that's like minus eight hours ish for me. So I would have to start, I, I would have to stream during the day instead of in the afternoon slash evening. Uh, let's see. That's going to work pretty well actually. It's 11.21 here now, 10.21 a.m. at the moment, so, I mean, would, when you say EU time, do you mean, like, EU time during the day, or, most people aren't watching in the middle of the day, right? Well, I can't even, I can't even guess, honestly, I think. I guess I should, I could go ahead and look up some of that. Oh, the substation just barely doesn't cover this side. How dare you. And if I do it on the sides, they're not going to touch each other. Uh, can't win. Let's just do it like this. Actually, since there's so much space there, why don't we make the undergrounds a bit longer? Make it line up with the pipe, why not? Okay. So we're going to do this... Actually... The inputs are so slow, we could definitely share a belt for the long arm inserters. And... Actually, we could probably share inputs for both of them, right? Uh... Two, nope. two, and eight per second total, I think we'll be fine. Nope. Nope. Bad bot? Wait, what happened? Oh. Hey, the West dude. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Uh, this goes here, that goes there. Bring this a little bit closer. Your bot is spreading utter lies about me. Um, well. You know what they say. They say I will not elaborate on that comment. Oh, that's supposed to be output. What am I doing? I'm confused. Um, that should be fine. That should be fine. So then, like this, I think. No. Uh. Why am I finding this so confusing? That goes there. Okay. And then... This goes here. I think that's right. Next these... Connect those. All right. Doesn't quite feel right having those that way around on this side. Fantastic. And then... Goes there, that goes there. Now then. Uh, that actually consumes six per second for all of these things. So, we need to double this in order to support that. That's not what I wanted to see. That's not what I wanted to see at all. Yeah, because you only get a 50% chance. I think I'm just gonna... I will keep this layout for later, but I think... We will do some specific blocks for these things. Otherwise, I'd have to double this, double this, and then still fit that, or like bump these up by 50% and have, what, two thirds of that? And that's going to be out of sync with the three per second that we can support, uh, support for all these. Wait a minute, what? Oh, right. We don't have anywhere for the junk data cards to go yet. That makes sense. Okay, let's get to adding another block. And spiders, go over here please. How much of this have we placed? 
bits and pieces. Random looking bits and pieces. That one in particular looks very odd. How's our power looking? Our power's looking okay for now. But I think this is a lull because everything's all saturated and has nowhere to go. Okay. Is that... Just rotating toes? Fair enough. Let's get some more scaffolding. Might check on Nervous right about now. Uh, how about we get the spiders to pay the biters another visit? Preferably in the pollution cloud. down here. Chicken. Or is it a rooster? It might be a little greedy. I think they'll probably be okay. Rooster, fair enough. And one more. One big one, but still. Alright, back to... No! Oh, I, I misclicked. I have to do all that again. No. Well... I'm going to do a bit more of a half ass job this time. Get them to recharge their shields for a second over here. Okay, let's try that again. Bring them down to this base, because it's kind of closer. Kind of. And... Bring scaffolding back, please. What are we making? Still inserters. Maybe I should have some inserters sent up or something. Oh, it's doing this thing again. It's going to load up literally 2,000 green circuits before it puts in a red circuit to make some stack inserters. Um, how about... How about no... There we go. Wow, that's a lot faster. Okay. Just gonna park this over here for now. I guess we can double all of this pretty easily, actually. I don't think we're going to need a second hypercooler to keep up with this stuff. Uh, 
Let's see. Wait. I'm gonna need room for another substation. Hypercooler goes here. Wait, where does the hypercooler go? That makes sense. Uh, so, we have 16 of these machines making uh, 6.9 per second negative 10 degree thermofluid and this thing can consume 52. So pretty much no matter how many of these we're going to have in this block should be enough. Get rid of this piping up here. His bot is broke and he won't fix it. No, it's working as intended. It's fine. Um, actually, I might just copy from here to extend this down. Might be a bit easier. Hold on, that doesn't look quite right somehow. Oh, we're not doing these in pairs, that's why. Okay. So what's our target? It's like six per second, right? I shouldn't have... Uh... I need this built so that I can rate calculate it again. It does if I do blame. Wait, what? Uh, I should probably stop rejecting all of the space belt in my inventory. Space pipe. I wish there was some way this could all work with pure clicks. Beside that one mod that I've been meaning to try. Juicy... Smolia got... What's a Juicy Smolia? We require 6.24 of each of these per second. 6.24. Oh, that's actually exactly right. What about this lot? 6.9. 5.9. Okay, this'll do. Also, we finished research for now. Should I queue up anything else? The Empire actor that staged a fake hate crime. That's a little bit cringe. Don't see how it's relevant to the stream, though. Alright. Uh... What else was I doing? What's the rate for the physical inputs here? Can we bring this closer? It's very low. Yeah, we can probably... Bring that over here, maybe? I think. 
just depends on the piping, which I think will be fine. Have you on monitor too? That's often how I stream, uh, watch a stream. All right, so let's bring our spiders over this way. And yeah, I think this will be fine. Wait, can we get an underground past all of that? No. Maybe. Do we even need to? No. Okay. So that's going to go there. This goes here. Uh, this, oh, this is for junk data cards, but also scrap. How did I do this before? That's kind of weird. I guess we're dealing with all of the different scraps, um, over here. I need to change this. It was down here that we were going to do the same thing, and then we found the train didn't arrive fast enough to pick up the emanated scrap. So this plan for not having the inserter stick out would not work. We need to use a precise loader here. But I, I do see why I used one station for all of those three different types of junk. Um, don't know that I'll do it this time though. Junk data card and junk data card and scrap. What's the total throughput for those two? Less than one for junk data card and 1.38 for scrap. Okay, yes. It does make a lot of sense um, to just bring those together. Uh, so output goes here. This goes over here. And that just leaves the question of how... We, we don't have to make it go up this way, though. Okay. So I'll put a splitter here. This goes here. And then... Two more inputs, but it's all... Uh, less than one belt. Wait, is this supposed to be negative 100 and negative 100? Okay. So that should connect like that. Very convenient. Uh, this one, therefore, will be the ion stream. Uh, we kind of need that and that to connect now. Unless we want to connect them down the bottom. What is this? Oh. I think I'll just use a regular pipe for these bits. And... Uh, we could probably just have this go like so. And 
Uh, it's not going to be the neatest. Oh, that's too long, isn't it? We could swap these out, I guess. I don't, I'm not thrilled about it, but... It'll be somewhat neat. And... like that. I suppose that works. Type spaghetti. stuff together while we're here. Substations. Go here. That's a nice clean fit. I don't suppose there's anywhere particularly unobtrusive to put the wire connections. Oh, that's not too bad. Alright, so we're going to request... A regular request threshold. And we said stack out of habit. Uh, and our two fluid inputs need to be ion stream and cold thermo fluid, no matter what. Cold thermo, negative 100. Uh, let's keep this turned off until we're ready. Iron stream. Negative 120,000. And then. Iron stream. Cold thermo negative 100. Cold thermo negative 100. Alright, I think we're ready. Except station name. Oh, uh, and um, stream. And then switch this on. Uh, blank data card and mirror we're definitely going to bring here. That's all the circuitry we need this time. Blank data card. Uh, what did these stack to? Is it 50? Pretty sure it's 50. Yep. Oh, and it's full. Fantastic. Uh, and multispectral mirror, I think, also stacks to 50. 50. Yes. How fast are we going to be going through these multispectral mirrors? Uh, still only 1.387 per second. Yeah. Okay, cool. Also, don't forget to connect the final input belt. Apparently, I missed copy pasting it earlier. Cut and paste. That should be fine. Train's already on the way. And then... Of course that underground would be in the one spot where I want to put a substation. Actually, it wouldn't reach here anyway. So let's just do it like this, and this happens to line up with the other block as well. Uh, don't forget the station name. Whoops. The black data card and multispectral mirror request. And it was uh, the same stack size, wasn't it? Okay. So 
we've got all of our inputs. Uh, we just need to do the outputs and connect up various pipes and stuff, basically. T-Hex doesn't even watch my cat videos I post? I'm afraid not. He wouldn't deny us at cat cam? That is just cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah, I, I wish I had a cat, honestly. I can't have one here. Uh, okay, so... Signals... Go here, and this goes here. West pre-filters bad videos out, so I watch only good ones. Goldak was spreading rumors. I've had a cat. Alright, this goes here. Signal, uh, standard pickup, and then, so we've got two main products that we want to have for pickup. And I think it's, oh. Okay. Well, that's nice and symmetrical. Actually, we've got two physical wanted products, two physical side effect products, and one fluid that we need to pick up from here. Where's our spiders? Oh, they're here. They just don't have that much scaffolding. All right, let's go pick up some more. Um... I think I'll do shed e everything out of this entire block is quite slow, right? 6.9 electromagnetic per second, 6.2 polarization. Um 1.3 case, 1.38 case scrap. Wait, what am I saying? 1.38 scrap per second. Less than one junk data card per second. And... 25 degree thermo fluid. What the... Oh, 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 oh. That's kind of lucky, sort of. These have all got... A minuscule amount of cold thermo fluid in them still. So they're not picking up what this train is putting down. Uh, logistic train stop output. Wait, what? Oh, that works for the moment. Okay, uh, I think I did the same thing up here already somewhere. Where did we have a dual fluid drop-off? Here it is. Hold demo fluid equals negative uh, 100 degrees equals zero. Wait, what? Hold demo fluid negative. Hold on. I remember finding something unexpected here. We got like a negative number out of this sometimes. Cold thermo fluid negative 100. Cold thermo fluid negative. Oh, this is not equal to zero. I just misread it. Okay, cool. So this is cold thermo fluid negative 100 not equal to zero. And then we do the same thing for our 
iron strength. Cool. Oh, and last but not least, make sure that's actually connected to the logistic train stop output. Bunk isn't working? Wait, what? If R worked, then bunk should have worked. I'm sure I heard a bunk earlier today. Bunk? Bunk is working. You don't own a cat, cat owes you. Do or do not have a cat. I need a clear statement on this one. Why is that? Just pretty low volume on the bonk. Yeah, a while ago I had a bunch of pretty unanimous opinions people were giving actually about volume adjustments that should be made to the sound effects. Um, I'm pretty sure that was after I started using OBS as well, so that wouldn't be... It wouldn't have changed, I think. Are the volume levels okay now, or is it possible something was adjusted? Oh my goodness. Circuit network 151,163. Really? That sounds like a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Even if it counts every little wire connection that you make as a circuit network. And even if it doesn't reclaim old numbers, that seems high. Snake Snake, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Edge Eater, welcome, welcome also. And I don't know if I said West Dude. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You're always coming in just saying the bot is lying or something like that. It was the T-Rex that was loud. Everything else has always been fine. Hmm. Is this the consensus right now? Uh, where's our spiders? And why aren't they... Don't tell me we've run out of space belt. I don't know if I could handle that. Uh, I know we have an automated space belt up here. I think bunk is low. Okay. How about I go into... Mix it up. Let's see. Channel points. Bonk. Alright, let's adjust it. Edit command. Volume is at 10. Let's try 20. How's that? I, I gather better, okay, I gather the way things are set up, people seem to hear things louder than I do, with those uh, sound effects and stuff. Alright, uh, so we're definitely going to do our... Uh, 25 degree thermofluid output here. Definitely needs to be a high priority pickup. And substations.
That's because OBS goes on straight input volume. Your headset is based off of Windows volume. I see. So if I change my headset volume, it doesn't affect anything for you guys. Uh, I forgot it would make the windows blowing noise. I was going to do a little experiment, but that sound effect is just a little bit too obnoxious. I need to switch it off. Shouldn't? Okay. Flying into Prague and stay there a few days first? Wait, what? Oh, okay. That's even more in the opposite direction, but I hope you... Oh, I keep reading things from something else. You can't use Windows alerts to test, they go off Windows volume as input. <laughs> okay. Uh... One thing that took me longer than I would have liked to find is disabling the notification sounds when Windows detects uh, something connected by USB or disconnected. Because if you have if you have anything that is in the least bit finicky with its connection. It's not a good time. Okay, so we're going to do... We, we don't need to do the fancy schmancy... Uh, keeping these outputs the same amount in the chests this time. Because this is going to be a high priority pickup for trash, basically. Um... So all we need to do is set filters blacklist, do a balanced loader with multiple items, and the train picking the items up and getting rid of them is how we're going to avoid the chests being full. Because if these chests fill up, the production of the stuff we actually want stops anyway. Uh, there is just one problem with this, though. Which is, if I'm going to do the each average with multiple items, it's going to look at the fluid as something that it can average as well. Uh, so, I think we could either use a combinator to make this one way, uh, like a one-way piece of wire. Or we could use a red wire to tell LTN uh, what's in the storage tanks. So that's, an, that's another good example of um, why you would want to use different wire colors or a, a different use case for it. I generally like to keep the constant combinator going to the logistic train stop input on a separate color from this, just so that what's here doesn't interfere with other circuits like this one. But obviously that's not going to be a problem with this wire here. Lidskajelf, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. If you want to turn it off, run mmsys.cpl, go to sounds, change to no sounds. Uh, yeah, I did find it eventually under the uh, sound options. The sound when you remove wires reminds me of something, but can't remember. Do you mean in Factorio? It's like a tearing sound, almost. Okay. So this, um, I think it's going to end up being inconvenient, which is which for scrap, for the junk cards and the other things here, but we can always swap it around, I guess. But 
let me just double check though, I think the max rate for all of the undesirable physical objects is just, it's literally like barely more than two per second. I'm not going to worry about, um, uh, I'm not going to worry about putting things on, merging them properly. Oh, that's the underground, that's... I see. Alright, we're gonna do a bit of a sushi belt for this one. And then... This goes here. That can go... There. There, I guess. And since there's just two types of items, I'm going to go in here. I think we'll have each of them on one side of a belt. Might be more convenient. If, if we just merge them here, as opposed to going all the way to this side first. So we're going to say polarization data goes here, and then here. I suppose I could always just use... Yeah, that might be a bit easier. We won't have to have a fancy dual loader system like this one if we do this. As much as it is cool, uh, it's a bit unnecessary. Loader. Balance loader. Wait, what? What am I doing? There we go. And then we're going to need precise loaders for keeping the inserters from sticking out. I should probably have a handy blueprint for this by now, but on the other hand, uh, it's not a bad carter to practice this circuit. Set, set filters, step, blah, blah, blah. Set filters, set stack size, S. All of these get the red wire. And then one per cargo wagon gets the green wire. Oh. And then we say... Remove a certain set of signals from the logistic train stop output. That is the encoded positions of these things. Multiply what's already in the train by negative one. Put those two numbers together. 
And then... Each divided by 24 chests. Output each. And also output S for stack size. Um, that goes to the red wire. And then once we drop below 24 items left, that should be a decider. Once we drop below 24 items remaining to be put in the train, we're not going to give it an S signal, so it's going to default to a stack size of 1. Each less than 24, output each. It doesn't matter if it's one or input count. Um, that's going to go to one inserter per cargo wagon. And we need to be absolutely sure we're doing a precise balanced load. Oh. And then it would also be advisable to make sure there's a bit extra before the train arrives to make sure that the that none of the inserters run out of items when they're swinging. Alright, substations, oh, I can't tell where because we're missing our big electric poles, there we go. And then... It's not going to fit cleanly no matter what I do. That lines up okay. That's good. That's a good fit. Alright. And also this one needs to merge in as well. Um, about this. Okay. Uh, I guess technically we don't need a splitter to merge this either, but... I don't know. Looks better somehow. I think that is just about it. What are we missing here? Some belt, possibly some pipe. I think it's all belt. Um, why don't we get our mole downstairs? Hold on, do we even have space belt here? I don't think I've even set up a proper long-term solution to... Sending space belts up. There's probably still quite a lot in this network. 2.4k, 2.6k, that's not enough. I'm surprised the copper ran out. What's happening? Oh, I got rid of that station, but I thought... I guess I didn't include a request for copper over here. That's not the drop-off. Apparently not. I should have seen this day coming... ...sooner. Well, we do have a bunch of belt here. Why don't we just load up... 
all of the pipe and space belt that we can. And next time I'll have to set up uh, like a proper long-term fully automated solution. Or we could start producing space belt in space since there's no productivity bonuses. It does require lubricant. Um, it's a little bit of a nuisance. But not as much as actually sending up the belts and stuff, I think. Dukani, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Zavoxifor, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well as well. I think it's the not knowing that rubs me. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go for this and this. And we're going to output space belt. Wait, no, that's not going to work. Because as soon as it's not in the robo network, um, the amount we're requesting is going to change and it's going to be dumped back here. Let's just use this to find out. How much space belt we have. If it's greater than zero, input count. And we've got 4.8k plus this 1.5k. Uh six three hundred. I could just set it to a really large, no, if I set it to a really large number and we can't actually fill it, it's going to keep trying to put the one, trying to put the one item in indefinitely. All right, what's this targeting? Nervous Orbit Scaffolding? I think that's where our mall is. I should probably rename it to Nervous Orbit Mall. How much space do we have? Like 400 stacks. If I rename this here, does that change the target name here? It does not. That was Orbit Hall. And this one. Now this Orbit Mall. Fantastic. Okay. Now then. It's like we're getting close to taking all the space belt. And then 4.8k space splitters. That's a lot. Uh, where did it go? Splitter. And how many undergrounds do we have? That's not great. Uh, 1,234. That's the wrong rocket, isn't it? One, two, three, four. It's oddly specific. Anything else I want? Okay, anything else besides inserters, that's uh, helpful. That I want to be sending up right now. Uh, we've definitely got plenty of room remaining. I could send up more inserters. That seems like a good idea. I'll wait till this is loaded. Oh 
almost there. Wait, what? Oh, we stopped loading space splitters because we're loading the undergrounds first. Silence in chat? What? Uh... Hmm... I wonder why. Okay, now we're into the space splitters again. Oh, wait, that would have been a perfect opportunity. Can we just double this? And is that going to make... No, space splitters are still a higher priority. Okay. What can we do while we wait for that? Double check all of this for one thing. Connect the fluid pipes. Um... That wouldn't happen to line up, of course. Is it too late to move all of this over a bit? If I move it over one tile... Nah, I don't want to bother with all of that. Let's just get it connected. If the underground pipes, the space underground pipes, reached one tile further, this would be a good spot to connect. Um, oh, here is good. Here is very good, actually. And for the coolant... Uh, let's see. Actually not sure where I want to connect the coolant. I might have to swap this out. That doesn't go there. Of course I don't have a fiver. Hold on, this is 9, 10, 11, 12. It's fine. That's what we'll tell ourselves. And that should be our coolant in place. Fantastic. Now we need a 25 degree thermo fluid. Uh, connected to here. Square. And then... None of these would happen to line up very conveniently. Alright. Oh, well, that's really unfortunate, actually. I might have to change this bit. that like so. Connect that like so. And how are we going to get these two connected to each other? Maybe... Maybe just bring this down here actually. Good. And last but not least, we need this output to connect to those as well. Um, which I'm not seeing an elegant way to do. Oh, that's 
very convenient, actually. Yeah, that that works. Right then. Uh, we also need some power for this uh, complicated circuitry. And what is this? This looks wrong. It's fine, I guess. I think that's everything, and we just need the belts now. Although... Oh. Yeah, no. I was gonna say... We need the trains to have delivered this stuff, but it has. Uh, so. How's our loading going? We're looking for more stack inserters. Uh, how many more stack inserters are we looking for? 416. Let's drop... Uh, let's just make this... 50. And then... Stack inserters are on the way. Logistic storage has... 0. So it's going to be like 10. Okay, not 10. That's definitely more than 10. But how many do we have? 865. We're still trying to load another 135. Okay, that's pretty much all I'm looking for for now anyway. Let's send it to the mall. Switch these off for now. And then... Uh, spiders are going to have to go pick some of that stuff up. I hope I left enough... Yeah, I definitely left enough room. In the cargo landing pad. Fantastic. Alright, so finally we have, or will very soon have, the prerequisite for a decent throughput of, um, this is 6.24 per second, let's just double check this, 6.24, 6.91, good. Uh, so all of that is just the prerequisite to satisfy this thing. And I don't actually want to cut it when there's not enough scaffolding over this way. Maybe I should be dropping some flat solar panels as I go. one way to make sure I never have to go out of my way to fix the power problem later on. And do the same thing on the other side. Yep. Take care, West dude. Thanks for dropping by. Have a good one. Why am I carrying quantum phenomenon? Ph phenomenon data. I'm struggling with pronunciation today. Let's put this back in here. And... Do our spiders have their stuff yet? Not even close. May as well go resupply myself in the meantime. Let's look at another set of spiders. Nope, wrong station. 
and they've been spending rockets on every set of biters that come this way. All right. Let's pay some more of them a visit. All right, and then uh, why not hit this? as well. I might just assume they need repair or ammo after that. It's such a short trip as well. Uh, that poor little inserter is really struggling. Why don't we add a few more of these? There we go. Not enough. Fantastic. Look at those bots go. I almost wish I could set it up so that different sets of power armor had different colors. Let's head down and finish our build. So once again, this is polarization data. And uh, electromagnetic field. And this one is going to be nothing but force field data. OG Shrooms, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we got all of that built with a drive-by. Fantastic. Let's get him to build this after that. Oh, and we're producing. Beautiful. We can see if everything's working properly. Uh, this is actually another situation where the throughput is so slow we could have just uh, limited some chests in order to make sure this is all balanced. But we need to do the balance, uh, the precise loader circuit anyway. Alright, so polarization data and electromagnetic field data, FIDO. And long trains only. Big provide stack threshold. Uh, we also need to tell LTN what is in these chests. And since they're connected, uh, we need to make this specific rather than generic. So polarization data and polarization data. There we go. So 
So why aren't we getting the polarization data? Because I didn't connect the belt, apparently. Oh, is this facing the wrong way? There we go. Uh, I think I see a problem. Possibly. Wait, what? Hold on, something is... Something is wrong. Uh, the output belt's supposed to be on the right, but... I thought I flipped the whole thing. How did that happen? I mean... I could always just... Bring this over like so. Gives us the opportunity to put these where they belong. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, okay. I mean, four, eight, twelve, sixteen. Okay. That should be all it takes. And I didn't mean to take that away. Now then, have we actually done anything about the 10 degree fluid output on this side? Yes, we have. Oh. Seems they're all working now. Here comes our first product. Fantastic. And our multi-balanced loader is working just fine. Why is this one stopped? Oh, there's no cold thermo fluid here. Okay. Uh, this is a bit awkward. I guess we could... Uh, no. I never did find a solution to this little connection that looked nice. Don't quite have room to underground belt this over here. I guess I could, like, not have a 7-piece here. If this was a 5, that would be a 3. That would not be so bad, actually. And this goes here. Goes there. Spiders. I forgot I sent the spiders over there. Now we've got that block finished. Nice. Well, not finished, but ready to start. And there's our old thermal fluid. And it's very plain to see that all of these are working now. Fantastic. Doesn't this also spit out? Or is it this one that also spits out scrap? Yeah, there it is. Why is this backed up? Oh, that's probably why. Uh, 
That's fine. I was wondering why we haven't seen any scrap in here. Nice and balanced. Fantastic. Alright, I think this block's done. Now for the whole reason that we built that block. Uh, actually, let's put the drop-offs in first. Stations. Uh, drop off. I think two undergrounds are missing at the left column of machines at the middle. So this one? You mean the electromagnetic facilities? Laser facilities. Two undergrounds missing. Left column in the middle. Pipe? Oh. Yes, thank you. Good catch. Wait, how is it working all this time? Oh, has it just not filled up the cool thermofluid output? That's why. Sneaky. Yeah, that would have taken, like, five minutes to stop working. I think. Alright, force field. Holmium cable, electromagnetic field data, and polarization data. I think... Oh, and super cold. I think what I'll do here is... A shared belt. Um, it's 6.24 each, so less than half a belt, less than half of a yellow belt for the entire thing for each of these two resources. I might just design this so that there's going to be room to double this in the same block, because what else are we going to do with this space? Um, but it should be pretty straightforward. At this point. Getting all the throughput. I don't actually have a blueprint uh, for what I'm thinking of here. I think we did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah here it is. Let's do shared drop-off with different belt sides for the two resources. Uh, polarization data, electromagnetic field data. And need to put that here as well. Polarization data. Electromagnetic field data has to be equal to zero before these inserters will drop some more. Oops. And 
that's it. Don't need any combinators for this one. All we're doing is reading a bit of belt and the hand contents. Uh, let's see. I was going to copy-paste the pickup, but no. Polarization and electromagnetic quester. Quest stat threshold, 160. What do these even stat to? 50? 50. So we'll go two train loads, 16k for each of them. I think we can switch that on already, actually, except for once again, I somehow put that one tile away from the uh, rail. And once again, I've run out of substations. Are we just not making substations up here? I know the answer. It seems we're having trouble getting around to it. We do have a thousand regular space pipe. We're working our way through the other types. Okay. Since I usually reach into my own inventory for substations, I'll just take them from some of the spiders. Now, how many inputs do we have here? One, two, three, four. Beautiful. That's perfect. And I don't think it matters which, whether it's the closer belt or not. I guess there's less for the long arm to do if it's the far belt. But it really won't make a difference. Is that? Oh, that's fine. And number... I'll do the far one first. Last but not least, actually that made it even hard to even harder to see what I'm doing. Oh, that's the output. Oops. Well, since all of these ended up being ended up looking exactly like this, maybe. No, I don't think that would look any more consistent. Alright, the other drop-off is Holmium Cable. Um, that's a bit inconvenient. I could always just move that underground a bit. I'll just double check, even if we double this. Uh, we need a little bit more than one belt, actually. So I think we'll do a 90 per second, just so that this will be extensible. And 
then? Should we start on the right side or probably? Right side, 90 per second. This one is, in fact, in the way. And... Just figure out where these go. Oh, yeah, it was a moot point figuring out, uh, hypothetically, which one should be the long arm, because for the ones in the middle, one of them is going to be short, one, of, one is going to be long anyway. So I think we'll do it like this. Um, actually... I'll work backward from here. That's in the wrong spot. And then... Well, that one won't have to be a splitter. Seems right. Oh, let's tidy it up a bit. Oh, that's a good, pretty good fit. That's a very good fit, actually. Almost perfect. I guess we can do it like that. Except now I feel like the whole thing has to be... No, there is no consistency with that, actually. Okay. Uh, I might have to move this down a bit or something. Well, there's definitely room to spare here, but it's not like we're going to get any more than doubling this. Let's put in some filter inserters so we know what goes here. Volume cable. turn this on? I did not. I don't think we're going to be changing this much, but maybe the belt, so we'll leave that switched off for now. Cable. Requester. What does Holmium Cable stack to? 50. Feels weird. Cable. Two train loads. And then... And then what? This needs connecting. Go there, except at the end. Oh. I 
just barely doesn't. Hold on. Gotta make sure I connect all of these first. Then we can see what a consistent build would look like. Don't forget the one on the end. No, that one's different. A hey, fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I kind of want to do the same thing over here as well. For some reason. Still to fix that far right belt that got messed up by the station. Wait, what? Far right belt that got mixed, messed up by the station. In this build? Or a different build? Too bad. I feel like this underground should go here, though. Hey, thanks for the resub, fat boy. Four months. Nice. Very much appreciated. Thank you. This part's not consistent with what we've got down below anymore. Yeah, this build. Okay, so far right belt that got messed up by the station. Oh, uh, do you mean this one? Yeah, yeah, I, I am aware of that in the back of my head. Um, trace the far right belt up, it'll be cut off. Oh, this one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same one, basically. This doesn't get to here. The only question is, what's the cleanest looking way to do it? Should I move these, like, two tiles down? I can do that one tile. I can definitely move these down a bit. I think we'll do that. Um... Let's just remove this bit of confusion. And move this down more than we need to. Move this down a couple of tiles. This would somehow look a bit neater, I think. Yeah, definitely. And then... These two are inconsistent now. Can live with that.
That's much better. And then... See how much closer that could be. That's a bit cozy. Probably better if I leave a bit more room for some fluid pipes. This is going to be so close. Oh, right there. That's a little too close, but I like the consistency. And this one is consistent with those other ones. That's pretty neat. Alright, what about the substations? We just need, like, one connection down the middle, it looks like. That's not quite the middle, is it? So we're gonna have th three outputs. I think the total... Let's see, 48. Output is only 6.2 force field data per second. And about the same junk data cards. So we don't have to worry about that. Throughput or balancing them. Uh next we need What are we gonna consume faster? Chromium cable, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot faster. So... What, how much faster relative to... St the stack sizes are all the same. You can barely see here that it's actually different resources that go into each of these. Okay. So in that case, we're going to do the fluid drop-off on this side. Because trains are going to have to drop off to here less often. And pumps. And don't forget to request the negative 273 degree thermofluid. We also need a regular request threshold, since this is stacks only. Okay, looking pretty good. Um. That just leaves the outputs, which will be 25 degree thermofluid, no doubt. Oh. And three undesired physical outputs. And now we're not able to recycle the blank data cards in the same block either. Okay. What's the rate for all of these? 48. Uh, 12.4 blank data cards per second. Same for contaminated scrap. Half of that for junk data cards. Well. We're definitely going to need a precise loader.
add it all up, that is 24, 30, just over 30 items per second. With stack sizes of 50. So, uh, about every 200 seconds or something, a train would need to pick up from this station. That's not too bad. But I think it might make more sense this time to have the 25 degree thermofluid pickup. I was going to say on the same side as the force field data, but then we can't have it a high priority pickup. Well, we can. It'll just make the force field data a high priority pickup as well, which I guess there's no harm in that. They cannot easily be recycled. Yeah, not as easily. Um, the other solution to this, especially considering how much spare space we've got, uh, is to just have more train stops. That might be the better way to go. We've got this entire... This entire thing right here is available for two more train stops. I think we will do that. So what's the sl I think junk data cards are the slowest, aren't they? No? Yeah, junk data cards are slower. So we'll do junk data cards and thermo fluid down here. And there's no risk at all in having a shared pickup for solid and fluid. You're not going to get solids in the fluid wagon or vice versa. low-tech balanced loader as well, since it's so slow. So let's finish this block. So for uh, 10 stacks per chest, actually, it really makes no sense to have more than four chests if I'm going to do that. Uh, let's copy the, wherever it was I did this before. was also junk data cards. Wait, wasn't this the exact same? Yeah, it was. Let's copy this whole thing. Junk data... How rude. Uh, junk data cards and... 25 degree thermo fluid. Easy. see where this lines up. Almost perfect. Which looks better. It's probably fine. Okay. Um, we 
can just bring everything together and then apply some filters to it because the throughput is low enough. So, tentatively do this, and this. We don't really even need splitters to merge at all, do we? Actually, with 48 of these we might. 3 times 12 plus, that's like 4 times 12. Which is more than 48. I mean, more than 45. It would be slightly more than 48 because I discounted the decimals. Alright, then let's uh, start applying some filters to these after we do a proper merge. Actually, this one can be be the best way to go about this. Uh, we need to not apply any filters until they've all merged, actually. So the first splitter they would all go through is this one. Let's do jump data card here. Perhaps. And our final product. Force field data. Force field data. Goes here. That just leaves uh, blank data cards and contaminated scrap. Which we're going to put up here. So, did we not put signals here? There we go. All right, then. Uh, what's the rate for the other two? It's a bit faster. It's like Double the speed. 12.48 per second. That is not insignificant for blank data cards. I mean, this entire thing makes 23.8 per second. Okay, let's put a balance loader. Not there. Here. And this one is going to be a little bit in the way. I could always load it from the other side.
That's inconvenient. That's also inconvenient. That's a snug fit though. Yeah, I definitely like that better. Uh, I think I, instead of splitting and having an extra belt when the throughput is so low, um, I think I'll just have filter inserters here. Set those to pick up the blank data cards. And then, once again, we'll put a filter there. Wait, list, blank data card, everything less than it's at zero. And then, it was contaminated scrap, wasn't it? Just enough. Don't need filters on these ones. Oh. So I'll just double check again. Uh, we're making desired out but junk data card, blank data card, and contaminated scrap, and the fluid. Oh, regular stack inserters with no circuitry will be just fine. This one. Fast balanced loader. Fantastic. some circuitry, I mean circuitry, add some uh, substations over here. That's weird, why does that, oh I see. Okay, this here and this here. That's too short. Cool. I think we're done. Sends a few very unnecessary for now. Um, electromagnetic facilities. And we'll do a filter so we don't mess this up. Fantastic. Alright, time to set up the uh, quests, or rather switch them on. And last thing I usually forget, or almost forget, is to connect... That's the... 25 degree output. We don't want to connect this to that. Let's actually connect it to the cold thermofluid instead. And then I should have kept these here for now. If only to see 
where the pipes need to go. Oh, that's not rotated properly. Yeah, I think that's right. Okay. Don't confuse me. Unfortunately, we can't put another lung pipe here. Actually, it wouldn't line up that well anyway. I kind of prefer to have the... Oh, hello. I kind of prefer to have the input connect all the pipes up the top and the output connect them all down the bottom if I can. It seems like we have some good room to do that here as well. Maybe. Well, that one just lines up too well. Um, almost perfect. one's going to have to be a bit different. And then... Fantastic. Looks like they're all cool. And then... Got our Holmium cable. Last is polarization data. And let's just double check. Seems our precise loader is working. Now the inserters on the other side flicker every time this swings. Perfect. Alright. So we've got our input fluid everywhere it's supposed to be by the look of it. I did not mean to put those there. the moment. Uh, and then all we have left to do is connect all the outputs down to here. That one's already done. So we've got two more. Hmm. Maybe I should is this doing? I think that was copied from the other thing. Maybe I should connect the output fluids here as well. It's looking a lot more easy to do neatly over here. I think I will do that. Except I can't use a 7 here, because it'll contaminate 
Seems like there's plenty of room to do it this way though. Seven would be slightly too long. I feel like that looks a little better, actually. Cool. So all of the 25 degree thermofluid pipes should be connected now. Okay. So what are we missing here? Electromagnetic field data. I thought the train was already coming for that. We have only 425 Considering it stacks to 50, that is not a lot. It seems to be stuck here. Oh, I see. It's actually because we're not getting conductivity data. And the reason for that is apparently 25 degree thermal fluid. This one's like in copper. The other half is not... Um, not connected over here. Send the spiders up that way. But yeah, copper plate... oh. Yeah, it's because we're not merging and splitting at all. So we do have copper plate on this side, but this doesn't have an outlet for 25 degree thermofluid. And because we're keeping this balanced, copper plate is not flowing to here. There we go. And there goes the copper. I'm glad it doesn't turn out we're out of copper plate. That would be a bit of a shock at this point. Especially considering how much copper plate we saw we had in storage earlier today. Fantastic. Um, so that means we can continue making electromagnetic field data over here. It would take four combinators, but it would be better if I set it up so that we just stop putting electromagnetic field data in if it goes above a certain number to leave room for the conductivity data and vice versa. It would take two combinators for each resource. I decided to say... Um, if it's above some constant, output 1, and then multiply that by something. Hmm. Maybe not. In this instance, if I just output it by input count, since we need a big positive number... Maybe that's true of this one, I didn't actually need this combinator. Um, because we just need a positive 
number to reach these in total. Yeah, I think I, I think instead of all of this, I could have said. Here's our chests. Each divided by negative 24 output each. Uh, if item A greater than whatever half of the... Uh, about half of the chest output item A input count. And then same thing for item B. And then feed that to the inserters with their blacklist. It'll certainly be greater than the negative average. I think I might go patch that right now, actually. Because that is not just fewer combinators, that is an improvement. Because we don't have to wait for one resource to put in the other. Well, it's an improvement for this use case. Um, maybe there is a use case where we want to make sure there's exactly the same number of each resource. in these uh, chests. Okay. Going to start with these ones. And it's going to be polarization data. Hey, Rorosaur. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If polarization data is greater than... what's half? Uh, stack size 50 times 24 times 48 divided by 2. 28,000. Let's just say 28,000. Leave a little bit of slack. And then same thing but for radiation data. And then remove these. So how much have we got of each of these? 28k radiation data, so we're not seeing it in action just yet. I'm curious how you do this circuit. Uh, did you just get here, like, while I was talking about it? I'll, I'll do a quick recap. So what we have here is a balanced loader for multiple item types. To do that, we set filters blacklist on these filter inserters. Red wire connects to the local chest. Green wire connects all of the chests together that goes to an arithmetic combinator. That spits out the negative average, just like we do with our regular... Um, balanced loaders these days. Uh, and that negative average also goes to all of the uh, filter inserters. So if we were to use a regular inserter, we would say everything less than or equal to zero, which means what's in the chest has to be less than or equal to the average. Uh, but we can accomplish the same thing with set filters blacklist, but we can do it for up to five items. Now, on top of that, what I had been doing here, uh, so that we don't overfill with one re with one item as opposed to the other, is making it so that we have exactly the same number of each resource in each chest. But all that really matters is that we leave room for both of the resources. 
So what I was doing was, if conductivity data is greater than electromagnetic field data, output conductivity data times a million. Um, I later realized two things. Uh, I don't need this times a million because outputting the input count is going to be uh, enough. It's going to be more than enough because the total is always going to be less than the average. I mean more than the average, the opposite of that thing. Uh, the other thing is, instead of comparing them, we can just put a constant. Because the only thing that we're trying to make sure we do here is only use half the chest for each resource. So that drops our combinator count, and it also uh, keeps these from like, one resource from blocking the other. It's gonna be the smartest spaceship? Thank you. <laughs> Quick recap, we did this and we did that, so we can have spaceships as next research. Yeah, five minutes. Just looking forward to how T-Hex will fit all combinators into a spaceship. It's going to be made out of combinators. Okay, let's port that to this block down here as well. There's just one of these to fix down here. So, this is a great example right here. We've got the exact same number of um, atomic data and subatomic data in each of these chests, but atomic data is being bottlenecked by subatomic data because we're trying to keep uh, the same amount for each of them. Mostly because I haven't built something to deal with junk data cards just yet. But yeah, step one. Uh, this is stack size 50, right? Change that to almost half a chest. Almost half a chest. And now we can keep putting in the uh, atomic data. Much better. Okay. I guess the next thing I need to do is deal with junk data cards. Uh, but why is this not flowing yet? Because we don't have electromagnetic data. We don't have electromagnetic data. Partly because of the thing that I just fixed. So what do we got? 1.6k only. That's not enough. Uh, we also have electromagnetic data being made here. That's looking a bit more promising. 17... Uh, 11k is significantly more than a train load. So... Probably, if I switched this on, we would then get a train coming to pick up these items. That would probably help. What about here? Did I make the same mistake? No, we're good. Eldak, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Vorosaur, enjoy it. 27 gifted subs. Veldak, fantastic, thank you. Really appreciate it. Okay, um, so 
So we should see a train coming. Yep, here we go. To pick up electromagnetic data cards. And that should be the last step we need to hopefully seeing all of this working perfectly with no mistakes. Come to think of it, if I had just put this underground up here, maybe we could have made a bit of a more elegant connection with the pipes here. Probably. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, it would have been bad no matter what. Fantastic. That's what I want to see. I believe that's our very first force field data. Uh, yeah, there we go. Those are input belts. I just haven't put any more buildings there yet, because until we double this, there's no point. Alright, what's the problem here already? I forgot to put this belt down there. Of course we would get junk before the final product, so we haven't got a single one of these in this chest yet. Where's our spiders? There we go. Where are our spiders? And switch this on. There we go. Force field data. Beautiful. Standard pickup station. Uh, station name is Force Field Data Provider. And that's it. Did I set this one up properly? Yes, and almost. And what about this one? Not quite. Scrap of the contaminated variety spider. And that should be it. Do any more pipes need connecting? Good question. Um, products finished. I'm seeing non-zero values on all of these, except some of them have only done four. 4.9k thermal fluid, 5k, 5.1, 5.1. Your output is broken. There we go. Okay, everything's staying in motion now. What's up with this one? Oh, we ran out of electric. Oh, and here comes some more. I see, the whole thing got thrown off because... Again, we're not doing a merge and split with the balanced unload here, and this wasn't consuming. Fantastic. So they're all waiting on... yep, there it goes. Beautiful. Alright. Um, 
did I set this as a priority pickup? I did not. I'm just gonna manually copy this and color one five five zero one five five. Whoa. Let's let's not do the lightning without expecting it. Oh damn. Nice. So I like to use the uh I like to use the same colors as logistic chests just for a shorthand so I know what the stations do at a glance. Purple means we want to keep this empty. So it's got a high priority. And next we need to... No, it's getting pretty late actually. Let's see if we can speedrun making something to deal with junk data cards. Um, I want to do it like here. This is around about where... This is pretty close to all of the things that need junk data cards gotten rid of. Did I just place that properly? There we go. Spiders... Let's have a look at junk data card recycling. Um, is this it? We need computers. And we need negative 10 degree thermofluid, and we need to get rid of 25 degree thermofluid. That reminds me, has, the, has our... System. This looks pretty good. Alright. There's 25 degree thermofluid here. These are all active. There's a, a lot of storage available. And this is our request of a 25 degree thermofluid from the rail network. So that's looking good. It does look very odd how the animations for these things are paused. But uh, that's okay. Fluid's looking really good, actually. What was the other thing I wanted to check? Let's get our spiders to pick up some more, uh, how you say, scaffold. And... And what? They're looking a little bit stretched. What else was I trying to figure out real quick? We've got our fluid. I was looking at what we need to get rid of junk data cards. Uh, so... Just junk data cards and cool thermo fluid. Two physical and one fluid out. That's pretty easy, actually. I think we'll just fill a block with these. And then we have to deal with uh, broken data cards, which becomes scrap. I think we'll, I think we'll do both of these in the same block. Actually, uh, that seems pretty sensible. One less train trip. I'll start the timer. I've only got like ten minutes left. I can't really. Maybe it would make more sense to, like, try and speedrun it in, um, sandbox mode. Because here we're bottlenecked by things like, um, placing the scaffolding. Uh, but yeah. It's pretty simple. As 
far as things we have to deal with in space exploration go. That's not... Oh, right, I flipped it prematurely. It's our spiders. Here they come. Dropping off more of those random particle accelerators. Maybe I should just finish building this block. If I'm gonna super over-engineer, um... Well, I don't know how over-engineered it is, actually, because this is really slow. Really slow. But yeah, if I'm gonna just, like, over-capacity, um... Proton stream. Assuming that is even what I've done here. Maybe I should just put these extra buildings down immediately. Except that I know for a fact that for now they're really unnecessary. Alright, let's start with our train stops. Somehow I've ended up with exactly two remaining. And I don't have any computers on me. And I don't think we're building any back here, and I don't think the spiders have any. Um, so that's another little roadblock. Is it just the crafting speed that changes with the better supercomputers? Space warping and higher dimensions for increased processing density. I'll take two. No? Okay. Yeah, I thought there were recipes that you needed the higher tier ones to make. Do I have any of those recipes yet so I can, like, review it? Let's see. Made in supercomputer only. Oh no, the first tier is supercomputer. Recycling percentage goes up to 95% eventually. Nice. So like you get, um, for example, a better chance of a blank data card. Get our spiders back down here. And it's gonna be... Whoa, whoa, whoa. That felt weird. Uh, jump. Out of come. Still missing some scaffolding there. I wonder if I should do the junk data cards on one side and the fluid on the other, or if it's never going to be remotely that fast that we need to worry about such things. Uh, one of these deals with 1.2 thermo cold thermo fluid per second, 1.2 blank data cards. Um, we can fit quite a lot of these here, but still, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Also, it takes like a second to drop off fluid. Missing an inserter there? Yeah, I noticed. It was where the uh, scaffolding still needed to be placed. I was so close to having finished the scaffolding here. I 
I should definitely configure some spiders to... What? To carry just scaffolding. It was just the bots being weird. Except, I said the same thing last time. If you have only a few spiders doing all the scaffolding, uh, it's going to be a really big burst of energy. I guess I could give them more batteries. Um, and I don't suppose we've made any supercomputers yet. Not even one. Somehow we never finish making pipes, ever. I guess the spiders have a lot of requests when they're all added up and we just haven't got there yet. Okay. Um, I can at least do some copy-paste to figure out... Okay. How many is this? Um, let's see how many we can fit all together. Like, in a column. That's not quite what I had in mind, but okay. Something like this. 14, maybe 16 if we're really greedy. That would only give us 18, 19 items per second coming out. Although we'd be able to fit several columns like that. We could probably actually fit a fairly high throughput in one block. It's only for dealing with junk data cards though, so... I, I want to do a quick rate calculation over all of this. I'm sure the computer will be very happy about that. Let's go. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Uh, yep, there's the yellow dots. It's a lot of items to check. Entities. That was quicker than I thought it would be. Um, okay, so junk data cards. Apparently, for everything we've built so far, we're only looking at 12.657 per second. So... Uh, on the other hand... 13 of these machines, uh, I, we calculated is what we needed to just support the tier 1 sciences. And that was 15.6. So it definitely doesn't hurt to overdo it. But yeah. Um... It's only something about this size that we need to keep up with everything we've got so far. So we could fit about... Uh, it needs an input as well. Let's say tentatively it's going to be this far apart. And maybe one more column like that. Uh, we're looking at 140. It might be a bit cramped with the physical outputs going to the trains. So 140 is probably on the high end for how many of these we're going to put here. 
Oh wow, that's like three belts of blank data cards. More than a full belt of broken data cards. I forgot the part where we're trying to fit the recycling facilities in as well. So we're definitely rolling that back a bit. How much? A hundred... hundred and... hundred and eight would saturate two belts full of blank uh, data cards and give us a hundred consume 128 junk data cards per second so this many I don't know if we could fit the recycling machines if we do that um, let's see at 108 37.584 per second we'd need like 70 uh, recycling facilities that's not going to happen not in the same block just sort of eyeballing this as well it looks like it's going to be about 50-50 for how much space is taken up by computers and recycling machines. I do want to put some ghosts here just so that I know exactly what this is going to be when I come back. Alright, it is about time to find a stream to raid. Uh, huh. Today I learned this browser remembers when you had multiple windows open for it, not just multiple tabs. Let's see who's streaming Factorio today. I raided Mucky quite recently. We'll see if there's somebody else. On the other hand, if you all are watching space exploration, you're probably looking for something big, right? Oh, this person's doing... Oh, that's chat plays Factorio. He's doing space exploration. Alright, let's... Uh, let's see how Mucky's doing with his mega base today. I'm sure he'll finish it one year. Take care, Veldak. Thanks for dropping by today. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're interested. If you have any questions or anything, by all means let me know. And uh, for now, tell Monkey not to swear. Take care, guys. Trains, you saw a ton of trains parked over in the east on Plainfield. T Hacks, thank you very much for the raid, mate. 63. Welcome, T Haxians. Um, I assume Humber will do his job and. Uh,